Good morning, Sabbath School. Happy Sabbath to you. I want to welcome you to Sabbath School this morning. And just so that I don't do it by myself and the person beside you feels welcome as well, I want you to reach to the person next to you and say, good morning, neighbor. Welcome to Sabbath School this morning. Amen, amen. And make sure that you share a smile with them, right? It's such an amazing feeling. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. For those who are joining us online, welcome. We hope that you are doing well. And we pray that as you invite us in your home today, you will be blessed. In a special way, brethren, we have so much to give God thanks for. What do you say? Amen. We are at the second to last Sabbath in the year. So if you're happy to be alive, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you're happy to be alive, let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. We have so much to give God thanks for, and it is a blessing to be here this morning. Just to make you feel extra welcome, we're going to stand and we're going to sing our welcome song, We Are Together Again. So I'm you to stand, touch the person next to you, share with them a smile, let them feel blessed and happy to be in the house of the Lord today. Father, we're so grateful for life. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us throughout the week that was. Thank you for keeping us to the, throughout the year. Either two, you have brought us, Lord, and we are so grateful this morning for your divine blessings, your protection, your provision in our lives. As we come today to celebrate you, to open our hearts and give thanks to you, I pray in a special way, Lord, that the persons who are here will not leave the same way they came. I pray in a special way, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will tabernacle with us. I pray in a special way, Lord, that you will bless us. Help us even now to honor your Holy Sabbath day and your Sabbath hours and to just celebrate the goodness of you. We thank you for everything. We, those who are on their way, even now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So today we are looking at the theme, Mission First, I Will Go. What's the theme? I Will Go. Let me hear you say that more resoundingly. Mission First, I Will Go. And that has been the theme for uh, our general conferences and through our camp meetings, through our youth at Congressory. So the members of the church are charged for next year and we're ready to go. And so this morning in Sabbath school, I'll be sharing with you the role that you have to play in Sabbath school, the role that Sabbath school will play in mission, in accomplishing that objective. Mission first. I will go. Will you go for the Lord? So at this time, we're going to turn over to our praise team just to get you in the spirit, um, to get your mind in that place of worship. So tune in with your voices and sing with our praise team this morning. And after being charged in such a way, let us turn our hymnals to number 388. Don't forget the Sabbath. The Lord our God has blessed. Of all the week the brightest, of all the week the best. Thank you. 
a balm of care and sadness. It is a day of joy and light. It's a day of rest and gladness. Oh, day of rest and gladness. Number 383. to stand with us as we will do our opening hymn, hymn 612, Onward, Christian Soldiers.
Christian soldiers. We are going to Matthew chapter 28. Journey with me to Matthew chapter 28, and we're going verses 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28, it's our commission. That's our mission as a church. Have you found it, church? Have you found it? No one has found it? Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. When you found it, please say amen. Amen, thank you. Or reading, it goes from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite you, you may be seated. I'm going to share with you a quick presentation. Hopefully it comes up on the screen. So this morning, I just want to remind our congregation about what the Sabbath school is and the role it plays in the mission of the church and the role that you play in the mission of the church. Now, if I missed welcoming my visitors and if there are any visitors here, welcome to church. For those who joined a little later, welcome to church this morning. The Sabbath school department. So just want to remind persons that we have a, a department that has superintendents and secretaries and members of the Sabbath School Department include myself, Sonia Thompson as the head, Sister Angela Nicole as our assistant, Sister Ingrid Wessel, Brother Dean Walker, Brother Isaiah Gray, Elicio, and Sister Alicia Williamson. For our secretaries, our head secretary, Sister Maxine Simpson, our assistant, Sister Shade Bent, and other secretaries, Sister Janice Carr, Brother Jelani Wilson, and our elder assigned, Brother Luther White. So when you see these persons and you have anything, any challenges regarding the Sabbath school, these are the, por the persons that you should report it to. We are your point persons in the Sabbath school. Question to the class, what is the Sabbath school? I'm asking you to fill in that blank space right there. Sabbath school is the blank of the church. Anybody knows the answer to that? I'm not hearing you. Amen. Say it like you know it, no, uh, brethren. Come on, man. Speak up. Let me know that you know it. Church, we you know. We have to give God our best service. Sabbath school is the? The heart of the church. And for those who did biology in school or who knows about the human anatomy, what does the heart do in the human body? The heart is the muscle that is at the center of the circulation system. It pumps blood around the body as it beats. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to all parts of your body, and it carries away unwanted carbon dioxide and waste product. So the heart is essential to the body. If your heart stops beating, what happened to you? You're dead. So it means then that the Sabbath school cannot stop what? It cannot stop functioning, or else what happened? The church is dead, right? So the Sabbath school, as the heart of the church, right, is the unit that's at the center of the church, pumping study of the word, fellowship, and mission around the church body. It carries Jesus' love to all parts of our community, and it destroys what? unwanted plans of the enemy. Amen, brethren? So when we, as the Sabbath school, as the heart of the church is functioning, we're beating, we're pumping the blood that needs to go around the church body and go around the church, the church community, then unwanted substances, plans of the enemy, events can be taken away. Why? Because we, as the heart, the Sabbath school is pumping the necessary um, activities that need to take place in the church and in the community. So that's what the Sabbath school is all about. You are the heart. We are the heart. 
and we cannot stop beating brethren. Because if we stop beating, it means we are dead. And we can't beat too slow either. Can't beat too fast. Because you know what happens to the body when you're, be you're beating too fast. But we need to beat at a steady rate. Amen? Yes. means that activities need to be ongoing. It means that through your units, you need to be actively going on with activities. Right? So what is the mission of the Sabbath School? Through our general conference and through the, the, the book or, or church book, the mission of the Sabbath School is to be a system of local church religious education that builds faith and practice. The Sabbath School is based at the local church and it builds faith through the study of the scriptures and the doctrines and teaching of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It builds practice through the application of Bible principles and the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to the individual lives and Sabbath school of the Sabbath school members. The objectives. So the Sabbath school have four objectives, and I want you guys to commit them to memory. I want you to remember these objectives um, so that you can know what role you play in the Sabbath school. The Sabbath school has four specific objectives. One, study of the word. How do we do that currently? Or lesson study, right? Studying our word at home, coming to review the lesson study. Fellowship, right? Community outreach and world mission emphasis. So those are the four objectives of the Sabbath School Department. Now, how do we, in, what activities can we do to go and, and to ob achieve these objectives, right? So before we go, we need to know. Know what? We need to know the word for ourselves. We need to know Jesus for ourselves so that we can take him to the members of the community, take him to our friends, take him to our church, our, our, our work members. So 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, be diligent to be present, to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So how does the Sabbath school intend to achieve deeper study of the word for the upcoming year? So just to tell you just a little bit, you'll hear more about it. But commencing January 7th, the church will be going on 30 days of prayer, brethren. Amen? 30 days of prayer that is inten intended to spark some revival among the church members, some spiritual revival among the church members. So you're all invited as Sabbath school members to come out um, and to participate in this 30 day of prayer activity. You will hear more about it and when we will pray on each day, but on Sabbath, we will meet here at 8.30 a.m. So I'm asking you to make the sacrifice. Come January 7th, be here at 8.30 a.m. so that you can participate in that prayer session. Because we need to be praying for each other, brethren. Come on. We need to be praying for our missing members. We need to be praying for souls. We need to be praying for the church and the mission that it has. And we need you to be here to pray for that. Because more prayer... Come on, I'm not hearing you, man. More prayer, more power. The church needs you. You are the Sabbath school. You are the church, not this building. So we have to come together to lift up our voices and to pray and ask God to do a mighty work in this vineyard. Another thing that will be happening, the Sabbath school classes will be going back to individual study. Amen? Amen individual study so you won't have teachers doing a presentation from the desk except for like a first sabbath or a 13th sabbath but we'll be going back into our classes to study the word of god so teachers prepare yourself students come early and be present for sabbath school also, one of the initiatives that we'll be doing is the memory verse. So your classes will be scheduled to stand up each Sabbath and to say the memory verse. And I know that my new believers are ready. Amen? Are you ready, new believers? Yes, right? And we need all the classes to be ready when we say, all right, uni three, it's your turn. You stand up the entire class and you recite the memory verse, right? We want to, no, objective number two, fostering fellowship. I'm moving quickly because of time. We cannot neglect fellowship, brethren. We cannot neglect fellowship. And the Sabbath school needs to foster fellowship among um, the brethren. 
So some of the things that you can do in your classes to foster fellowship is, number one, ensure that your class has a care coordinator and a secretary. So the care coordinator is responsible for ensuring that all the members are present, finding out all the members are doing, reaching out to them in the week, right? Not only the teachers, but the care coordinators, or you as a class member, right, Andre? If you don't hear from Sister Ilda, you reach out to her and you say, Sister Ilda, you all right? How are things going on? We need to be more caring as a church. Number two, establish prayer partners in your classes. Number three, plan a class potluck. I know that the new believers planning class potluck. I'm so proud of you, new believers. You've been doing so well to stay as a unit, right? Plan a, pl a class potluck one quarter, right? And invite friends to Sabbath school. Invite your friends to the Sabbath school, brethren. The Sabbath school is the service of choice. This is where you come and get the meat, study the word. So invite your friends to Sabbath school. Object objective number um, three, we're gonna move to number three. Community outreach. So Christ's method, brethren, Ellen White writes that Christ's method alone will bring true success. And his method includes five things. Mingling with the people, showing sympathy, ministering to their needs, winning their confidence, and then bidding them to follow me. Right? So as a Sabbath school, we have to be involved in community outreach. We have to minister to the needs of our Sabbath school members and also to the members of our community. How do we intend to achieve this? So we intend to achieve this through a Sabbath school shut-in day. Each class has a Sabbath school shut-in. If you don't have one, you let the secretary know. And on that day, visit your shut-in. Let them know that you miss them. You want to see them, worship with them. We'll be having a Sabbath school impact day, right? And it's gonna be an annual event where every Sabbath school class will participate in some level of impact. You must can identify a project that you want to do as a Sabbath school class and execute that project. Sabbath school community guest day is another thing that is on our annual calendar. Number four, objective number four, world mission. Missing members day. As I look at the Sabbath school, a number of members are missing. If you look to the left of you or to the right of you, you may be saying, oh, I don't see so-and-so, and I don't see so-and-so. They haven't been coming to church, right? So we need to have a day where we will place emphasis on going to look for these people, calling these people, reaching out to them, right? It's not for us to come here and say, but she stop come church. No, our responsibility is to go after them when we don't see them brethren. Am I right? Yes. We are to call them. Make sure that they're doing all right. Call them, find out what is happening, because sometimes we don't know what the devil is doing in people's lives. Right? We have to pray for our Sabbath school members. So we will be having a missing members day to highlight that. Sabbath school prayer walk. We're familiar with this, going out into the community. Priorities. Branch Sabbath school. Now that's something that we've been missing for some time now. And we'll be re-establishing a branch Sabbath school, brethren. I'm coming from the Sunday church. And how I go, it went into the Sunday church is through branch Sunday school. The, 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 the church had a Sunday school in the community that they kept every Sunday evening. And children from all about would come to that uh, Sunday school. And it's through that Sunday school that they used to feed into the church and prepare people for baptism. Right? And we can, that's the method that we need to be adapting. Going out and establishing a site where we can invite children of the community. Come on now, there's a lot of children. And the children will bring their parents. Right? So we'll be establishing a branch Sabbath school so that study of the word can take place in the community. My final word to you. The Sabbath school should be the service of choice. But it needs you, brethren. It needs all of you to be a part of the Sabbath school, to take the mission of the Sabbath school seriously, to take your role as the heart of the church seriously. We need you, every teacher, every student, every visitor, to be a part of the Sabbath school. Amen, brethren? Mission first. I will go. Will you go? Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand with us. Stand with me. We're going to pray. Just a prayer of commitment and dedication that as we plan 
God will help us to achieve these objectives of the Sabbath school. And don't sit and look at me, brethren. Ready to work, ready to move, ready to play your part as the heart. Because if the heart doesn't beat, we are dead. And God not call for be a dead church. We have to pump the blood, the lifeblood into the church, brethren. All right, let us pray and then we're going to go to our lesson review. So I hope our team are ready. Let us pray. Most righteous eternal Father, Lord, thank you so much for your mercies, your grace. Thank you for calling each and every one of us to work with you and to work for you. Lord, you can raise stones up to do the job, but you've called us, your people, to do this work. In a special way, Lord, revive our hearts and our minds. Put fires in our hearts and our souls to worship you, to praise you, to evangelize, and to share the message that you've given us with others. Lord, you want to come, but because we are lackadaisical, because we've become so dead as a church, your coming is delayed. Help us, oh God, that as we go into this new year, we as a church, we as a Sabbath school, the heart of the church will enter this steady rhythm of beating, of studying your words, evangelizing, doing the mission that you've called us to do so that your work can be accomplished in this earth and in this part of the vineyard. I commit every single member that's standing before you. You know our individual challenges, Lord. You know where we are. But I pray in a special way, Lord, that as we enter this new year, we'll enter with a new zeal. Onward, Christian soldiers, going into the battle to fight for the souls, Lord. Help us to, to understand that we're called to win souls for you. That's our sole mission here on earth. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. We pray that you'll bless these plans and help us as a Sabbath school department, as a Sabbath school of the church, to achieve these objectives for your greater glory. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. Bless us as we continue this worship session today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We are here to review the lesson, the adult Sabbath school lesson that we would have studied during the course of the week. How was it for you, Elder? Well, it was a busy one, but it was a blessed one. And, amen, amen. And I'm amen. giving thanks that we can be together this morning to share in the, the word. Share the word. And it's really the, the, the topic that we, that we looked at, that we focus on this week, is a very, a very intriguing interesting, one. Intriguing. Yes, the judging process. Now, what, what comes to mind when the word judgment is mentioned? You, you, you would take note that we have been looking at a very important series of lessons. Oh, yes, oh, um, yes. And, and death, dying, and the future hope. That what we have been looking at, and we have been going step by step by step during the Jenny Porter, and um, it's so interesting this morning that it has brought us to this point. Um, the judgment, or the judging process. Yes. A very interesting one. It is, it is, and it really culminates uh, all of what we would have been working on as, uh, as, as God's people. Yes. And not only God's people, but, but once it is that you would have entered life then there is or there will be a time of judgment. Yes, just, so just before we actually go into this, we're going to just pause and invite the Lord's presence to tabernacle with us as we get inspiration from the Word. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for drawing us close to you today. 
And we thank you for the joys that your salvation brings. We thank you for your words that can help to make us wise. As we open them now, we ask that you will open our hearts and give us receptive minds for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Now, judgment. Is it good news or bad news? So we think of judgment, we think of our court scene. Yes, we Yes, think, so we have our courtroom and all, all, all that goes with it. But what does judgment really mean? What really comes in sharp focus when you hear the word judgment? Well, you know, for some people, when you talk about courts, from you use the word court, not courts, courts. Once you use the word court, yes. they don't want to hear that. Not at all. Because they know that once you talk about judge, yes. um, court, you talk about judge, and you talk about lawyer, and you trial. talk about trial, mm -hmm. and you talk about... You, once you hear that, record. Yes, man. All of these things come into play. And for some people, when you, when you use that word, judgment is going to meet, up, meet out to you. It's a fearful experience yes, yes, for them. It can be. So the question you ask, is it uh, good news? Our bad news? Ah, uh, it depends it, on where on, the, on 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 what side of the fence you find it, yourself. At what on what side? So is it that you can find yourself on the third one, two, three, four? Ah, uh, no, <laughs> no. There, no. There's no middle ground. There's only there are only two ways. <laughs> only, only and two. In, yes, and oh. in Second Corinthians five verse ten, the Bible says that we all must. It uh, didn't say probably. Yes. It says that we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Right. And it says all that that's that's inclusive. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. We must all appear before all. the judgment seat of Christ. So the judge judgment means justice. Justice. Yes. Judgment it, 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 means it's really justice. So it's really handing down that which you have worked for. That's right. So it either can be it can either be good or or, or evil is based on what you have worked for. And, and that, that could talk about choices also. It, it will be because uh, really, in a nutshell, our or, or sentence is really to vindicate us yeah. or to, to hand on condemnation. And it, it comes back to the choice that we would have made. That's right. You know, the lesson says that the... Um, we can hide from everyone hmm? yes. and everything else, mm -hmm. but nothing is hidden from the eyes of God. Nothing at all. So God, God, God knows. Yes, and he says that he will bring every work into judgment, yes. every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. Yes. So nothing will be hid from the face of God. So what this really implies is that he does not need a judgment for himself to know the life of each individual. God's judgments are, God, God's judgments are indeed a divine accommodation to carry on um, for the sake of its creation, right. our creatures. So it's really to show us or to, 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 to reveal to us that, listen man, it is, it is, it, it is just, it is true. But, um, it's not impartial. Yes. So you, um, you, you look at, um, remember the accusation that Satan makes Brought against, against God. God. He says that God is not fair. He's not just. God. He's not fair. He's not un unjust. Right. So the judgment is not, it's, it's not about God. It's to reveal, it helps us help to reveal the impartiality of God. Right. And, 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 the, and to show that he is, he is not, and, and to reveal his character. Yes. And the character of God clearly states that he cannot lie. Right. And that he cannot God lie. Is love. He's love. Yes. And, and, and because of that, the, the judgment. When we talk about the judgment, we talk about fearness. Fearness. And you justice, know, justice. Right. Um, justice. There, there, there is one school of thought, Elder, that says that the judgment, the judgment is not fair because it is skewed towards saving us. <laughs> And I look into that and I said, there may be some merit in that because God has done everything possible to, possible to save us. Yes. So it's really skewed towards us. You know, so the, the, the thought that comes to mind is that when a man or a woman lost out of God's kingdom. He's God, really honoring. Yeah. God, He's honoring God, God our God decision. Done everything. Amen. Everything that he could have possibly do in order to save me. 
So if um if God if the if the judgment is skewed mm -hmm. toward rescuing mm -hmm. me, then God really wants to save right. me. It's really fair to us. Yes, yes, yes. It's really fair right. to it's, us. Yeah. So we talk about um different phases. Uh, yeah, vindication in the judgment. Oh yes, vindication for those who have who have made that. Uh, May Christ be Make Christ a center yes. unto death. Yes. Unto death. So it's not today I'm for Christ and tomorrow I'm some in the river on the bank. It is really being consistent yeah. with the hope that we have that burns within us and living in the judgment or because, and we're going to rush to the phase of the judgment um, shortly. So we, we, we are now living in the pre-advent judgment or it's otherwise called the Investigative, investigative judgment yes so are you saying that we are living in the pre-advent in the pre-advent judgment no no so All it right. is a present continuous yes. it's happening even now as we speak um we, as, as we looked at the as we looked at the lesson over the um over the past weeks and leading up to today we um we discovered that um since 1844 and based on what daniel chapter 7 9 7, 9 through 14 says, and, and, and Daniel chapter 8, 14, the Bible says that until 2,300 days, then shall then the shall sanctuary, the sanctuary be, be, cleansed. be cleansed. What does that mean, so though? We, we talk about the, the, um, the advent, the, the, um, the 1844, since 1844, Christ has moved, moved from the holy place most holy. To, the mo to the most holy right. place. Um, so he, he says that he appears into the presence of God for us. For us. So he now becomes... For seen again. Yes. Our high priest. Yes. Our great high priest. Now, Christ is in the presence of God. And which means that records are brought. Mm -hmm. in front, brought they are being brought before. And we have been brought to Names books. are coming up. And that's what led us into that pre-advent. Mm -hmm. Our investigative, investigative judgment. So, anytime now, any of us' name can come up before God. Mercy. Anytime now, any of us' names can come up before God. Because Christ is going over the records of the living. And it has been going on now. You know, the, the thought came to mind some time ago that Noah preached for 120 20. years. And and then came judgment for the antediluvian world. Mm -hmm. um, for Sodom and Gomorrah, judgment was there for them. Oh, yes. The angels went into Sodom and gave them enough time. So there was time. In so much that he was able to take out Lot and his family out of, out of Sodom. And then came judgment for them. But, Fire and brimstone rain down on him. But can we can 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 based on based on those those evidences that you would have put forward, can we say that it was a hand they that they were handpicked? Did God take them out to say, I will save you? Did God really do that? If, or were was it a case where they were all given equal opportunity? To make that decision as we are today. You know, I'm, I want to throw this question down there to somebody. That question you asked is a very pa power packed question. I want to throw it down there. Is it that God unpicked some, pa some people? Do we I say? I don't know. I don't know. Because if it is that God would have, if it is that we, we are seeing where God pulled out Lot, yeah. literally yeah. pulled him out, out of the city of that was condemned. Yeah. Is it before that God judgment. before judgment? Yes. Is it that God is saying, all right, I have, I said, I'm only going to be saving Adventists. I'm going to be save, saving Seventh-day Adventists. What is it? How, is, how can I be sure that I can be a part of the first resurrection? I saw a hand down there. I, 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 we have a roving microphone. I saw a hand down there. Get to that hand for me. Is it that God, is, if God was to do that? Would he be a just God? A partial? <laughs> yeah. Remember that uh, if God wanted to just pick out Lot and his family and just burn Sodom, there's no way he would have had a conversation with Abraham. You know, he had a conversation and they went from 50 to 10. Yeah. And they couldn't find 10. He bartered. He bartered you know? with them. So, so there was this conversation between man and God. Yeah. 
And Abraham stretched it so far. They said, if, you, if there is 10, would you spare the city? And God said, if I find 10, I will spare the city. It means despite of their wickedness and the evil that they were going on with, if God could find 10 righteous persons, he would have spared Sodom. So All right, thank you. So the, the reality is that God, God gave, gave every man right. equal opportunity. And that's, amen, amen. And, 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 and just by picking up on, 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 on what our brother here is saying, if God articulated with Abraham to say 50 and he came down, he was, he was bargaining. He is bargaining with us today. Right. It's the same conversation he's having with us today, you know. Yeah, but, but how is that translated in, 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 in us today? How is, is he having that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with us? How does he articulate to us that he is, uh, that he really he wants, wants us? To, he wants to give us so he, 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 he speaks to us through different medium. Yes. Yes. So he speaks to us through the, through the word, so to someone who is, who is delivering the word of God to you, to saying to us, that I am giving you that opportunity that you can make it to the first resurrection. Which takes us now to, to the millennial. The millennial? Yes. Uh, the millennial judgment. There will be a, uh, we talk about the, the, the 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. Many means 1,000. A thousand. And the, Neil. Uh, Neil means year. So, so um, between, the, the, there will be a 1,000 years. What thousand years? When it begins? We talk about the second return of Jesus Christ. All of us are looking forward to it. Amen. Every one of us are looking forward to the second return of Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes the second time, he's going to, the, 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 the Bible teaches that he's, going, he's not coming to call out my name, Luther White. Did you do this? Did you do that? That would have already been passed. That would have already been passed in the the pre-advent pre judgment. judgment. That would have already said it. So when Jesus comes the second time. Just giving you a reward. The, 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 he comes to give a mm. reward to the righteous. To vindicate the righteous. To vindicate the righteous. Mm. So when Jesus comes the second time, they, they, they are two classes of people. As a matter of fact, there are four, four classes of mm -hmm. people that they, um, the scripture relates to. Um, and, and the lesson talks about right. as we have been studying. You have the, the righteous, righteous living. dead. Mm -hmm. The righteous dead and the righteous living. Mm -hmm. Then you have the ungodly um, dead and the ungodly living. Who will remain when he comes. So when Jesus comes the second time, the righteous dead will be resurrected. First. First. Yes. The Bible says that they, they will come first and in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says, blessed and holy is he that hath passed in, in the, the first, first resurrection. resurrection. So the righteous then will be resurrected first. And along with the righteous living, living they'll be the, caught up. They both will caught up. Transform. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Transform. Right. And the Bible says that in a moment, twinkling, in twinkling of, of an, an eye. eye, we shall be changed. So both groups will be transformed and changed and, and ascended. Transported to, to heaven. The in the Amen. Of Jesus will not touch earth. this earth. Polluted as it is. As it is. Has to be cleansed first. Amen. Paul Amen. Says that we, the, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the angel, and the dead in Christ, God, and the dead in Christ shall, shall rise first. first. And I praise God to know that God is going to honor the righteous. Amen. Amen. The dead in Christ is going to is going to rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So then, the righteous will be taken to heaven. Mm -hmm. And that is the beginning of the millennium. Of the millennial. That is going to be the beginning of, of the, the millennium. millennium. All right. The millennium is we talk about a thousand years. Right. So the righteous is going to spend one thousand year vacation in heaven. What will they be doing? What will the saints be doing during the period of that one thousand years? In, in First Corinthians chapter six and verse two and three, the Bible says that the saints shall judge the world the world mm -hmm. and this is where this 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 is where this um this this um this text applies 
Because the righteous will be going to heaven and will be looking over the, the records. records of the loss. For example, your mom, a faithful Christian you know, mm -hmm. living and while she was alive. And, and in my mind, you, as far as you are concerned, is that your mom has been living up to the standard and the requirement that God has set up. But somehow, you did not know that behind the curtain and behind the dark clouds, your mom was not contrary. Was, was living contrary. Mm -hmm. When you get to the kingdom and you don't see your mom, in my mind, God is unfair. Gonna, yes. Yes. Why? And here is the opportunity that the records are will reveal. To say that, well, this is why your mom is not in heaven. So, so, so the records there, really. It is there that you are going to conclude that just, just and true. Are your ways amen, your amen, ways. amen. Yes. So it, it really confirms, it really confirms that God is just to save. Yes. And it also confirms that God is really, God would have given every opportunity for the wicked to repent. Yes. And we could, we, we will see in the records that they would have defied the word of God yes. and they went their way. So he was really honoring their, their decision. Yes. So he this. doesn't force anyone, and it will be clear there, confirmed in the records. This, listen, listen to this. The process provides an opportunity for the saints to evaluate the heavenly record and to see God's fairness. Our God's fair treatment in all cases. He not only reveals all human beings according to, to what they, they, they deserve, based on their own decision, but also explain to them why he did what he does. What he did. All right, so, in, in, so, so there should be no question and in the, the, the mind of the saints. The millennium is going to make all things Crystal plain, clear. clear to us. Not only that, the millennium is going to assist the saints to pronounce judgment. God, you. You, are a true, you are a just God. You are a righteous God. Fire for him. Because this is the choice that he or she has right, made. So we are now declaring, we are now concurring with the Lord to say, yes, just and true, Truth you have way. made the decision. Now, King, so the, the millennium is going to reveal that God is a just God. It's going to reveal that God is a God of love. It's going to reveal to us that God is impartial. Yes. He's unbiased. Yes. Yeah. And Not it prejudice. will reveal the true character and the true nature of evil. All right. Yes. So which takes us to so after all of that would have all of that would have passed what is the final phase of the judgment process the judging process Well when you go to court and the the the, the, the lawyer would have summed up his case and 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 make his case to the judge it is going to left to the judge now to to make his decision and the, and the decision that the judge is going to pass sentence, final. once you are found guilty, final. The, the, he's going to make his final um, sentence. He's going to pass his sentence. And, and after sentence, you are going to condemn to what? You are going to condemn whether to five years yes. or 50 years. Huh? Um, so it is. The, the saints would have summed up the case of the, right, of the unrighteous mm -hmm. and the lost. And, and here it is now, he had, would have concluded that, well, you, you are worthy. This is what you have done. The and you know, as, as, as one section of the lesson tells us that God, God is going to, God, God will honor our decision yes. and choices that we made. He will not go against us. He will, he, will not, he, he will not go against what we made. So each one of us, every day of our lives and every moment of our experience, we are making what? Choices. We are making decisions whether we are going to or, stay or on again. God's side or we are going to walk away but, from God. But, but Elder, even not making a decision is you making a one. decision. How do you explain that? Uh, I choose not to go. It yeah. means that I will remain. So I've made a decision. Even if not making a choice, I, already, I make one. I would have made, <laughs> made one. one. Yeah. Exactly. So it, <laughs> what you're basically saying is I will follow Christ or I choose not to follow Christ. There are many... Remember, there are two ways. Only two. Only two ways. So it's either or. 
So if it is that I'm not deciding for, then automatically, automatically I'm against. Automatically decide against. Yes. So that, that's what it really is. So the, the um so the, the point I make is that um not making a choice, I make one. So every single day, it's a daily decision that, that we, we are making to follow God, yeah. and every single day that needs to happen. Today's decision cannot take care of tomorrow. And it's not only every day, no, Elliot. It's every moment. moment. It's moment by moment. That's right. So today doesn't take care of tomorrow. Or no. today doesn't take care of yesterday. Today, now takes care of now. But you know, the, the, the lesson talks about... So it's about, not one save, always save. No, it's not one save, always save. Not at all. So it's not that you baptized today and you're walking with God. And following in his footsteps. So it is, and, it's, it's and, a, it and is and a moment you, commitment. And that. tomorrow you feel like, well, you can slip, slip aside. And have to you, go back. Uh, and you don't, it's you going don't, back to the source. You don't, really, you don't really leave God, you know. You don't really leave God. But you just get stagnant mm -hmm. today. And, and then you say, well, God will understand. Tomorrow I will come back. At work. We don't, we don't know. Because if it is that we are living in the pre-advent judgment or yes. the investigative judgment, there is no saying as to when our names will be called. Right. So and if our name is called, that is it for us. Our case is now being pleaded. And that is, can be good news or bad news. It bad, depends, it on, depends where on where we are at that time when our name that, is called. That, that's right. So which takes us now to the executive judgment. And the executive judgment is a judgment of what? Condemnation. Condemnation. And that is what we talk about when the judge would have summed up your case. The lawyer would have summed up your case, sum up, make a summary. Mm -hmm. And the judge would have summed it yes. all up. And the judge would have made a decision mm -hmm. and say, well, all right, you are, you are found guilty. And I'm going to sentence you to 50 years mm -hmm. imprisonment. And um, right once, is, once a sentence is, is, is read out, that's final for you. That's it. You can't plea, you can't plea bargain with the judge. Not Your at time all. to plea bargain is now. No. No. The Bible says, Behold, now is. now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So the executive, the ex executive judgment is a final judgment. Final. Yeah? It's the final. Uh, the case has already been decided. You know, you know, condemned to death. And you are going to suffer the you are going to suffer the, the consequence of the choices that you have made. All right. So 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 the dead would have been in the grave. The dead would have been in the grave. There the the is, millennium now. Right. We would have we would have started the millennium. Mm -hmm. The cases would have already right. would have all, all looked over. Um, judgment would have passed. So we have come to the close of the millennium. Good. The Bible says that when all of this is over, Jesus now will return to this earth the third time. All right. So on his third return, yes. On his third return, what will happen? The, um, Who the, would have been on earth? Because remember now we know the devil and his angels would be here torment. Don't yeah, don't, because they have don't nobody, nobody to, to tempt. Because to tempt. the unrighteous dead would yeah. have been in the grave. Yeah. Waiting on their reward. Yes. And reward can either be good or evil. Yeah. So the reward for them is condemnation. No, it can be reward for good or evil because right away they remember the, that the, 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 um, the first group that was sleeping in the grave was resurrected. Right, and so they taken would have been vindicated. Heaven. So all those who would have remained in the grave and would have been destroyed by the brightness of Christ coming the first the second coming we'll be coming up for they would have been in the grave so no they would have been coming up back to receive their condemnation their reward right. or their condemnation mm -hmm. so together with satan and his angels they saw the city yes man ready the, to, the bible says yes. that the, the, the it ready would be in, in in sight yes the, the righteous will be down will be coming down with jesus with the retinue of angels yes, they man. will be coming back to this earth and because Satan they are this coming is my with our reward. Now. Yes. Satan says that, hey, we can get them. Yes. It's the final look here. And the Bible says that they gathered them together. Gods and Magog. So you can talk about fray. all those men of war 
Those great men of war mm -hmm. who fought great battles and won them. Charlie Mange and yeah, Hitler, Hitler and all, and all of these men. He gathered them and put them in army and groups and says, well, no, we are troops. going to go up there. Yes. And Not only that, Satan says that we are more than them. Of course. We are more than those that are in the, that are in the city. So we can get them. The Bible says that fire came down Amen. from God Amen. out of heaven and destroyed them. The question. But even before that, I'm saying, I'm seeing a hand here. Even before that, while the microphone is being transported to our sister here, even before that, the unrighteous will bow and say just and true because so even them will really come will to the realization that boy, God the, really do everything for save yes. we you know. And the, just we in our own stubborn ways yes. decide to go against the will of God. So All even right. they will repent and say that just and true Satan himself are thy will works. Say that. Yes, there is the hand. Let's let's yes. say that final one. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yes, thank you. I don't like how you use the word. Executive is different from executive. Executive. And executive is a important person. You say you're going to see an executive. Brother White is the executive of his office. Of executive his judgment. That's the one we're talking we about. We should use the word executive judgment. Executive judgment. That's the one we're talking about. Another thing is, studying the lesson, we realize that, I hear you guys saying those who don't repent, are going to go to this and that. All of us inside here sitting in our pretty clothes are going to be judged. We, we are going to be judged. Remember that judgment starts in the house of God. And all of us, I know, are sitting here thinking that the, the only thing that should be in our minds is the lifestyle that we're living. Are we living to raise up in the first or second resurrection, brethren? Because if we're not doing that, this does not make sense that we're doing here. And it becomes a lifestyle for us when we learn how to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. One, because we're in judgment now. That's right. What we say, what we do, what we wear, what we eat, what we watch is being judged right now, brethren. And the end of time is coming so rapidly and we are, inclusive of myself as we say we, are not focused when we look at this, if we really study this lesson, brethren, we see that we are in the time of where we have to stay focused as we're going to be lost. All of us that are doing all these pretty things here. And when we leave church here in the week, we are different people. And when we come to church, we're all here than thou. And we don't know so God will judge we. And our judgment going to be worse because we know better. We know better, brethren. Come on. I've been coming to church from I've been 12 years old. And look where I am now. We cannot be lost, brethren. This judgment too serious. I want to sit up there and judge the wicked with God. I want to look up and say, Lord, this is my God. I don't want to come and when I come. Make a judge. I'm going to be judged with vibes, cartel. We are. Huh? <laughs> we, we are. But is that what we're working for, brethren? Is that what we're sitting here for? So we got judged with gunmen, we kill people. Don't we not make sense? We don't make sense. And remember now, whenever we get a chance, brethren, yeah. it is for us also, not just the people outside there. It's for yeah. everybody. We're going to be judged. We are being judged right now. We are Thank being you. judged right now. Thank you, sister. That's all I have to say. Sister Amen. Thank Amen. you. As we come to the closing, closing thought, sister yes. Nisha, maybe you want to put the a lid on it. Time now, we have gotten the wrap up signal a long time ago. Put now, lid on after it. all that we have said, <laughs> yes, and when we really look at it, the Lord is uh, calling each and every one of us. Yes, He's calling me, He's calling you, He's calling all of us. And He says in Revelation 22, verse 12, Behold, I come quickly, I come quickly my reward. and my reward is to give every man according as his work shall be that's what's right. my work what's your work that's how we will be judged yeah is it time has time passed do we still have time to make it in the first resurrection yes we do once we are alive then we have the hope of making it in the first resurrection mm. may god help us that each one of us will recognize where we are in time 
and to see we are, we are closer to this. We are closer to where we are going than where we are coming from. And it's only as we give ourselves over in full surrender to God that we can, we can safely say that we are safe in the arms of Jesus. The songwriter says, oh, my loving brother, when this the world on fire, fire, don't you want, God's don't bosom? You want Christ's bosom to, to be, be your pillow. pillow? Each one of us must understand that the, our only safety is in the arms of Jesus. Amen. May God bless us. just joining us for Sabbath school, I want to extend to you warm, warm welcome to church. Do we have any visitors in our midst this morning? Anyone visiting with us for the first time? Good morning. Welcome to Sherwood Seventh-day Adventist Church. You're visiting with your wife this morning? Uh, your friend. My bad. May I invite you two to stand? Amen. Give them the Shortwood wave, brethren. Give them the Shortwood wave. Welcome to Shortwood this morning. We hope that you'll have a wonderful time with us. And to our wonderful members, it's good to see you. Welcome to church, and I hope that you will be blessed today as you continue to worship God. Today, we looked at the, the theme, Mission First, and I asked you a question. What is the Sabbath school? What is the Sabbath school, brethren? Let me hear that more resoundingly and loud. What is the Sabbath school? The heart of the church. And if the heart is not beating, then we're dead. So it means that we need to start beating and maintain a steady beat as the heart of the church. Because the heart is needed to pump the lifeblood, evangelism, through the church and its community. So remember that you are the heart. You are the heart of the church. Don't forget that, and you have to play your role to maintain this body. At this time, I'm going to invite you to meet in your Sabbath school classes, teachers, wherever you are. If you're outside, get on the inside to meet with your classes. Mark the blanks, collect the Sabbath school offering, collect the uh, harvest in gathering, meet in your Sabbath school. If you're not sitting in your Sabbath school class, Move to your Sabbath school right about now so that you can meet in your classes, be marked, and um, you can have care and share. So we're going to stand. I'm inviting the church to stand with me. We're going to pray to close, after which we'll take a special song. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, thank you so much for your blessing, for being with us from morning until now. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the lessons so relevant in these times, reminding us, Lord, that even now the life that we're living, we need to be living right because you say it in your word, Lord, that when it is done, those who are doing wrong will have to continue doing wrong. Those who are doing right will continue doing right. Those who are holy will continue be, being holy. Help us to live the life that's pleasing to you even now. Give us, Lord, strength, forgive us, and help us to walk in you as we enter this new year. Help us to enter with a new zeal, figure, fire for your word, for sharing it, fire for the love for our brethren and our friends, our family members, seeing them saved in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do in our lives. Thank you for your forgiveness. Continue to bless us and keep us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for participating in Sabbath School. Join us early next week, Sabbath, because next week, Sabbath is the final Sabbath, and we're going to have a cut of wampus time here, just celebrating God. So make sure you're here early next week, Sabbath, to kickstart our day.
testing, 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 testing. When life gets you down and you feel more broken than whole. When the wounds go deeper than words and you can't tell a soul. I may not know what you're going through, may not can make that high mountain move. But one thing I found that I really want you to know if it matters to you, it matters to the master. He wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your word gets shattered. If it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain or your really needing an answer, if it matters to you, it matters to the Master. too busy to care about your trouble and strife. He sees a sparrow that falls to the ground, and he hears the tears that don't make a sound. If you only knew how precious you are in his sight. shattered if it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain or your really needing an answer if it matters to you it matters to the master if it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain traded for drug money to an old man. She learned to fear him. Watch and see how AWR Radio became her way of escape in the darkness. Hi, I'm Cami Utman and this is AWR 360. The Philippines may seem like a tropical paradise, but many people who live here are desperate for someone to save them. Trisha never enjoyed her childhood. It was filled with misery. Her parents were addicted to drugs, and that is all they cared about. The only time they talked to Trisha was to yell at her for bothering them. She was only a problem for them and always in their way. Because of their drug addiction, they had finally found a use for Trisha. They sold her to their neighbor, 
and left town forever. He was an older man in his 60s, but he was just as evil as her parents. He ruined her childhood. As Trisha grew older, his control of her dominated all her emotions and behaviors. She was always in a constant state of fear, for even the littlest mistake resulted in beatings and pain. She dreamed of something better, but he made sure to keep her isolated. The old man warned her, if she left, severe punishment would quickly follow. One day, Trisha heard the sound of peaceful music. She ventured out to seek the source and found that a smiling neighbor was listening to AWR. After enjoying the song, the broadcaster spoke about a peace that can be given to all people. As he finished speaking, he offered, if you need help, give us a call. Her current misery flooded before her eyes and her face started to show it. The neighbor asked what is wrong and Trisha burst into tears. Trisha confided in her how every day she was afraid and how she was abused constantly, emotionally and physically. Trisha admitted she was at her limit and could not live like this anymore. But hearing the message on the radio gave her a glimmer of hope. The neighbor immediately called the AWR broadcaster during the next song. Shocked by this plea for help, he left the station and quickly drove over to rescue this girl. He knew he had a limited time before the evil man found out she was missing. Back at home, the old man realized something was wrong when Trisha was nowhere to be seen. Frantically, he started searching every room to see if she was hiding again. Rage built as he was deciding on how to discipline her for leaving the house. He would let her have it for sure tonight. In anger, he started yelling. Trisha, fearing the worst, ran towards the street. Her dream to escape could not end now. He searched everywhere, but could not find her. Now he was the one that felt fear as he wondered if she really did run away. As they sped off, Trisha did not care to even look back. For the first time, peace entered her heart. She knew she was finally safe. Trisha felt acceptance she had not known before and was learning more about Jesus every day. She was determined to let others know about the Savior who was healing her heart. AWR's Mountain Ministry asked her to join them. She spoke to rebels, teaching them the love of Jesus. With peace in her heart, she was soon baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. No longer a slave to fear, Trisha is now free in Christ. What a contrast today from what Trisha used to feel from fear and sadness now replaced with hope and happiness. Won't you prayerfully consider supporting the work of AWR in the Philippines? Visit awr.org to find out how you can make a difference today from broadcast to baptism. This is AWR 360. Testing one.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, just clap your hands and say hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, just lift your hands and say praise the Lord. Indeed, he is worthy to be praised. Now, I notice I'm only here in one side now. I believe persons were praying just now, so I'm going to do it one more time. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, just say amen. amen. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, clap your hands and say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, lift your hands and say praise the Lord. Indeed, he is worthy to be praised. It's now our personal ministry's time, and at this time, we will be pro promoting or in gathering. Now, when we go to choir practice, we usually do a certain warm up before we sing a song, right? So, I'm just gonna do the warm up today because my director said I cannot sing the victory song today, right? So you're going to repeat after me, and I know you guys are lovely singers, so you're going to repeat after me, and I want my musician to follow me as well. Now, now give me a key, brother Brian, so I can. All right, all right, so you're gonna sing after me, right? Ma me mi mo mu No man, that's how we have to warm up in a brother brand because when we sing the victory song next week, you know, everything should be all right and ready to go, right? So I'm going to do it and then you're going to do it again. And don't worry, it's not a chant or anything. It's just warming up your voices for the victory song next week, right? Because we're claiming the victory in Jesus' name, right? Amen. All right, let's go again. Mame mi mo mu. All right, take it up a key now, brother Brian. Mame mi mo mu. All right, some, some people, one more, one more, up one more, brother Brian. Mame mi mo mu. All right, so, so, so some persons find the key and some persons don't find it, but you'll work on it throughout the week. So next week, when we sing the victory song, you guys will be ready. Amen? Yeah. Amen. No, I'm happy to report that as that, as that last week, because remember, we wouldn't report what we collect today. But as at last week, we would have collected $379,675. What does the church say? Amen. amen, amen. So the conference's goal was uh, 173, right? And we, we reached that about two weeks ago, right? But we know at short we do things bigger and Oh, months ago, we, we reached the 173, but here at Shortwood, we do things bigger and better. So we created a super goal of 346,000, which doubles that. But you believe we can do better than that, right? And I mean, if we pass the 346 and we reach 379, that means that we need to round up, right? So, so how much we need to go then? No, man, I don't hear them loud enough. I hear a voice outside, but I don't hear everybody inside. How much you need to go? 400 what? All right, that sounds good to me. So that's our super, super goal. So we decide that we reached our super goal from last week, and we decide that next week when we are singing the victory song, we are going to be at 400,000 and even more. But I guarantee you, that next week we will be singing the victory song. And just as a reminder of the requirements for the different individuals, I'll share with you now. So for individual members, you are required to give $2,000. So each adult unit, you're required to give $28,000, $28,500. And we have nine adult units. For the young adults, you are charged to bring in $25,000. For the new believers, you are charged to bring in $20,000. For Cornerstone, 
20,000 as well. And for the children's division, $25,000 as well. Now, we believe that there is a more out there to be contributed to this great work of God. Amen? And I know a lot of persons, they would have gotten their, their, their special bonus already. So they would love to contribute at this time. And so we're doing this last push for us to get out there and provide persons with the opportunity to be a part of this great work. So we need to remember the reason for in gathering. It's not for us to take out our money and give, but to provide an opportunity for those out there to participate in this great work. And so we can share the love of Jesus with them. Now, along with the in-gathering, we are encouraging the church to enroll at least one person in the Bible school as part of the evangelistic work to win souls for the kingdom of God. Letters are still available for those who need it to take to companies. So I'm just going to do the warm-up one last time, and then I'm out of here. Give me, give me the best key. All right, ready. Mami mi mo mu. Mami mi mo mu. All right, all right, all right. You guys sound a bit better than before, but I'm going to hand you over to Pastor now who can probably do a better job than me. Let's continue to put hands, hearts, and minds together as we spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you. and it is called Daughter of Mine. And I only have four copies remaining. And I also have the adults devotional, and it's entitled, I Am With You. Now, brethren, these are really inspirational devotionals to start out the day in the mornings in the year 2023. So those who are interested, this is the adult one. The adult one and the women's. Are right. you are interested? You can see me this evening. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath, Church. I think the Happy Sabbath should be just a bit stronger than that because. As terrible as 2022 have been for some of you, we are at the penultimate Sabbath of 2022, which means that not just safely through another week, but safely through another year, God has brought us. He's been an awesome God. Happy Sabbath, church. Yes, yes, we bless the Lord this morning for his faithfulness, unwavering faithfulness, unswerving loyalty, and his unfailing love toward his children here at Shortwood. I just want to let you know that last Sunday afternoon, we had a grand opening of Sister Lawson's house. So, <laughs> I think the, the microphone was acting up a little bit a while ago so that the brethren did not hear what I said. So, I'm going to say just one more time that last Sunday afternoon, 
we had a grand opening for Sister Lawson's house. Amen. Amen. Which means that the cause for which we have been laboring, we have now come to a moment of celebration. Sister Lawson is now comfortably in. Hello? <laughs> And she is happy. And we are happy. And so as I came in this very setting, utilizing this very platform to solicit your support in cash and kind to that end, know that you have been generous to the cause. And we have gotten to our desired end. I have come back with just as much vim, vigor, and vitality as I asked, I am back to say thank you, brothers and sisters. Yes, thank you for those of you who made financial contributions to the cause. Thank you to those of you who made, those of you who made links and got us money or material Thank you to those of you who came and labored on this site. Thank you to all God's wonderful children, both those here with us locally and those in our virtual congregation who heard our cry and you answered. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our communications team will have you see those of you in the diaspora will have you see uh, you know pictures or snippets of the moment uh, maybe not today but at some point so that you can see where and how your contributions were utilized now I'm happy that sister Lawson is in for several reasons one of those reasons, brothers and sisters, is that now we can turn our attention to church renovation. Hello? <laughs> we can now turn our attention and shift our focus to church renovation without having to divide our attention and our resources and our efforts. We are, by the grace of God, taking them down one by one. And so, the work at Sister Lawson's house is done, but our work is not done yet. <laughs> our work is not done yet. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that for our first class God, we believe that we should have a first-class house for him to inhabit. And that's not an us thing. When you walk through uh, the book of Exodus, when he calls Moses to build the first church, you will notice that he was very particular, very first-class, very picky. Hello? With how? He told Moses to build this sanctuary. And so he didn't just say, Moses, I want a church. I want something, a building to live in and left Moses to do the building plan. But God himself put the building plan together. And he called Moses upon the mountain. And then he said to Moses, remember what I showed you on the mountain? Ensure, that's Exodus 25, 8. Make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them and and then he tells Moses follow the pattern that I showed you on the mountain. and so you'll get more detail on that the renovation committee has already put the proposal together as to where we are headed we're headed at great things bless the Lord I want to remind you church that next Sabbath is the last Sabbath of 2022. Next Sabbath is consequently our Thanksgiving service. 
We are saying to our members, as we reflect upon the past year, as we reflect on the stats, as we reflect on all that could have been, but has not been, we are not in the cemetery, we are not in the mortuary, we are not in the hospital, we are not incarcerated. God has been good to us. And I'm not saying that we haven't had challenges. We have, for many of us, we've had a woeful year. Many have had a weeping year. But we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. And I dare to suggest that we have come too far to look back. Hello? We have come too far. And there's only one rational for us being here today. And the answer can be found in Lamentations. It is of the mercies of God that we are not consumed. Because every single morning when we wake up, and the money that we spent yesterday is still gone. The mercies that we squandered yesterday are renewed every morning. God is good to Israel. And that is why we are here. And so we're saying, brethren, let's come out on next Sabbath with a praise on our lips. Thanksgiving in our hearts. And let's come. And, and somebody said... We cannot put a monetary value on God's goodness, but we can say thanks anyway. And so, I am commissioned to tell you to bring a thanksgiving offering next Sabbath. Hello? I know often the church gets quiet when it gets down to the money part, you know. <laughs> but as I said, we cannot put monetary value on God's goodness. But we're asking you to bring a thanksgiving offering with you next Sabbath. Separate and apart from your tithe and covenant offering. A thanksgiving offering to say, thank you, Lord. Though we cannot put monetary value on your goodness, this is my way of saying, thank you, Lord. Finally, uh, we want to... We're going to begin 2023 with 30 days of prayer. 30 days of prayer. We're going to begin 2023. I believe with all my heart that God's plans for this church in 2023 are beyond the scope of our very expectation. And nothing lies outside the reach of prayer except that which lies outside the will of God. The Shortwood Seventh-day Adventist Church is committed to setting men and women free in 2023. We do not have the power to do that, but we have access to the power through prayer. And so we're going to begin the, the year the right way we're going to kneel before God so that we can stand before any man in 2023 we're going to be kneeling for 30 days straight every morning from Sunday to Friday at 5.30 a.m. on Zoom and that's alright I know some of you are already challenged because <laughs> You're not going to bed early enough to wake up at 5.30. Here's a good way to start the year. Fixing your sleep schedule because the quality of your rest determines the quality of your work. And so we're going to start the 30 days of prayer from the, the night before. The evening and the morning were the first day. And so we're going to start by fixing our sleep schedules. So we go to bed early so we can wake up early and commune with God. Hello? Hello? Because in the stillness of the morning, 
we receive strength from on high that will keep us throughout the rest of the day. And then um, on, we're supposed to be having, you'll get more detail on that as the time goes on, two days dedicated to prayers and fasting, Sunday the 8th of January and Sunday the 22nd of January. We'll be having fasting and prayer right here at the church, Sunday the 4th of January and Sunday the 8th of January sorry sunday the fourth as well as no the fourth is not a sunday just the fourth and the 18th are going to be days designated for prayer and fasting as well but those are personal prayer and fasting days wherever you are at school at work at home wherever you are we're going to be connected at the throne room for for prayer and then every sabbath in january is a special day of thanksgiving Every Sabbath is a big day. In fact, every Sabbath in 2023 is a special Sabbath as we come to the house of God to venerate his name. And then I see the host standing by, which means I've been standing for too long. And so I want to remind you, Church of God, that the Seventh-day Adventist church is not quite a Christmas church. Hello? Yes, we are not a Christmas church. The pen of inspiration admonishes us that we should capitalize on the season to point people to Christ. Our only hope, his birth, his death, his burial, his resurrection, but every other denomination can preach those things. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church doesn't stop there. We preach his ascension into the heavenly sanctuary, performing the work of atonement. And we are in fact living in the antitypical day of atonement. And Jesus soon will come. And so in this season, don't just celebrate he was born. And in fact, Seventh-day Adventists know better. If we were to celebrate the birth of Jesus, it couldn't be how it is being done now with all sort of Bogoyaga-ism and Buturella-ism that's happening around us. If we were truly to celebrate the birth of God on December 25th, Lord have mercy. Have a wonderful Sabbath and the Lord bless you richly. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Indeed, Sister Nisha, this is indeed God's holy and blessed Sabbath day. Amen. I am Amen. excited to be here this I morning. I am elated. You, you, I am on top of myself. You're on top of yourself. Yes. Yes, yes. The, the, the beauty about being in the house of God on a Sabbath morning is that you would have reflected on what the week would have brought what? you. Yes? Whether good or bad. You would have seen how God would have led you. And you are here to give God everything because Amen. the least we can offer God is our what? Is our service. Is our just, service. Just, and just, giving him and, our all because and, and the least. Here, it is really the least, you know, Shane. Yes. It is the least because when we look back and see where the Lord has brought us from. Yes. And to know that we are here celebrating on the 52nd Sabbath of the year. 52nd. We say amen yes. to amen. God be amen. praised. Amen. Because we yes. are living, we are dwelling in a grand, grand and awful, and awful, time. awful time. And we are here on top of our graves. And we are saying to God be the glory. At the beginning of the year, who would have known we would have been here celebrating on the 52nd Sabbath of the year? We say to God, be the glory. Great things he hath done. And how better to say to God, be the glory than asking the church to stand with us as we sing the first verse as the priest will lead us 
into the first verse of the song. To God be the glory, great things he has done. We are just warming up as Elder Davion yes. led us, you know, in our days of choir practice. Yeah, we did. Yeah, but in the in the modern time, in yes. his era, it yeah. is uh, more me, me, more, more. That one. Oh, All yes. right. So we're gonna stand and sing the first hymn of To God be the glory, so that come next week Sabbath, we can truly celebrate God's goodness. Praise team. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So lovely the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin. Thank you so very much. You may be seated. Indeed, we have everything to give God thanks oh, for. So the privilege yes, is mine oh, yes. this morning to worship with you. You're live at the Shortwood Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Shane McIntosh, and with me is... Anisha Palmer Murray. Yes, and we want to say a big and a special welcome to everyone yes, who are seated in are, the house this morning. And those who are present in our virtual congregation. And you know, Elder, I look in the congregation and I'm seeing someone that I would normally see in the chat. Yes, Being yes. quite vibrant in the chat. Oh, Who's yes. that? And, and I must say the chairs now, I'm going to ask her to stand. Sister Carmen Bryan, if you, if you are following in the chat, this person is always online, always commenting. But I she's put, here and so she says she cannot be here a, yes. and not come to Shortwood. Right? And this is the sister of Brother Bryan, Sister Whitaker, and Sister Joy Tom. Thomas, we just so want to say... putting a face to the name. face to the name, finally, right? All right, so welcome, sis. And we are seeing more visitors. We're going to ask you quickly, if you are visiting with us, to just stand so you can be acknowledged. And if you are visiting in the church, just, just acknowledge. Yes, I see welcome. people popping up. Yes, yes, and those are the nieces of, uh, of, sister of Jackie. Sister Gemma, Gemma. Yes. yes, 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 I see them, right? Welcome, guys, welcome. And I see a lovely sister Strange there. Strange face yeah. there, welcome. I saw... Sour School Superintendent in, introduced two persons, but let I'm me just go ahead and say and I'm still, two visitors sitting. Yes, they're still sitting. Right, right. Just jump up, let Waiting. us see you guys. They're yes. standing, about yes. to stand. Ah, go ahead. Welcome, welcome. Oh, welcome and there's welcome. two more at the back that I saw when I was heading out. Yes. Yeah, ah, 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 welcome, there you guys. Go. Welcome we, we, to Shortwood. Yes, yes. We are happy that you made short with your choice of worship today. And again, to those of you who are online, a special welcome to you. You could not have been in. Anywhere else, because this is indeed where you ought to be. Welcome once, welcome twice, and do enjoy the Sabbath. Again, if you're online, please like, share, and subscribe, and take the opportunity to right now, brothers and sisters, to send the link so that somebody can join in the fellowship that we experience each Sabbath. Amen. We now move over to our family time, and that is the time when we acknowledge or identify those among us who would have celebrated birthdays, also anniversaries. Now, we have quite a bit, as yes. we were absent for about two weeks. Two yes, weeks. we had transferred our, our place of worship elsewhere, yes. and we are here now together in one accord, and we are going to be going through so it's family time and if you are interested in having your photos or your information being read for your birthday or anniversary you may send a photo to 876-453-8300 ephesians 2 10 tells us for we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do now we're going to be looking at those who celebrated their birthday up to this, this time where we are, right? So go ahead, sis. All right. So on the 1st of December, we had Yoan Brown, yes. Venice Wilson, Diana Dunn, and that would have done it for the 1st of December. Now to the 2nd, Eldo. We have 
You want to help me that Athalia, mm -hmm. Athalia Wyatt. Yes. And Marion Lawrence on the second. On the third, we Gabriella are... Small and Danielle Jones. Yes. On the 4th of December, Tracy Ann Douglas and Shane McIntosh on, on the 5th. And I'm right. certain you enjoyed your day. You shared oh, yes. it oh, yes. with oh, yes. Carla Thomas. Yes. And on the 6th of December, jo Jonike Topi. Mm -hmm. And also sharing the 6th is Maxine White. On the 7th, Nicarda Logan. Also, Antoinette Weber on the Lady 7th. Weber. Yes. yes. Jovelle Simpson on the 9th, along with Herma Duar. And the 10th, Leighton White celebrated his birthday along with Carl Headlam and John Mark Blackwood. On the 11th, we have our stalwart of an elder, Luther Elder White. Luther White. He celebrated his birthday on the 11th. On the heels of the 11th, we have Joanna, Joanna Tope on the 12th, along with Garnet Walker, Kayla Lawrence also, and mm. our veteran, George Hardy, celebrated on the 12th, along with Natalie Green. Yes. The 13th invited Patrick Tullo as he celebrated his birthday. And the 14th... I'll, I'll allow you to introduce this one in any way, shape, or form you want to. <laughs> All right, so the special man himself, Lloyd yes. Murray, celebrated his birthday on the 14th. Then we move on to the 15th, Sister Dorothy James, Sister Gloria Wilson, and Sister Angela Lindo. Then the brother it. in the mix. Yes, Delroy yes. Franklin. Delroy Franklin, right. Rihanna Byfield on the 16th, and the 17th, on the 18th, Amoy Davis. And Sharing also with Amoy Davis was Olive Ricketts. Ricketts yes. The 19th, and Daniel Wilson. Then on the 20th, Brother Riddell Jones. Yes. On the 23rd, Brother Bernard Blair. And we, that's wrapped, that has wrapped it up for those that have passed. But the upcoming birthday now, we have on the 25th. Tomorrow, Colette mm -hmm. Maxwell. And Sister along Juliet. Along with Juliet Gale. Yes. Also. Jennifer Wilson. And. Uh, Renee Duar. Quite Duar. a few. Yes. Not yet finished. Fitz Henley Spencer. And that wrap it up for the 25th, and then we move over to the 27th. We have Karen Miller. Right, and then on the on 28th, Jay Gale, along with Ethelyn Thomas. And to close the year off in fine style, Sister Tishane Byfield. Tishane Byfield. Right, right, all right. Now we're going to move over to our anniversaries, and again, this is from, we have started December. The sixth. On the 6th of December, celebrating two years. Evan and Annette Jones. Then, oh. on the 7th of December, celebrating 14 years, Nisha and that, wait, wait, introduce him, that special man? Yes, that yes. special man. Right, that's Lloyd and Nisha Murray, all of 14 years. Amen. Yes, then on the 14th of December, 15 years, Ian, Ian and, and Naomi Mitchell. Yes, then on the 12th of December, Celebrating 29 years of togetherness. Amen. Earl Don and Angela Nicole. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And then on the 14th of December, Rupert and Yvette Henry. All of 37, 37 years. years. Amen. 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 Then our first elder and his wife. On December 17th, all of 22 years. Amen. Dave and Annette McNeish. Wow. On then, the 17th. So. Same 22 years, mm. Lowell and Ethelyn Thomas. Yes, yes. Then, and I listen out, listen guys, listen for this one. Jeffrey and Veronica Bryan. All right, that's our, that's our musician, one of our musicians. Celebrating 20, 30, 35. 35 glorious yes. years of on, togetherness. On the 20th. Amen. Amen. Then we have, on the 20th again, 12 years, Colin and, and Alicia, Alicia Williamson. Williamson. 12 years of togetherness. Yes. And yeah. Elder. All right. Calm and Ooh. Ooh, after Today's, all of that, yes. today, Today's, yeah. 46 years ago, Amen. 46 years ago, Josephus and Patsy Harriet celebrated Hello. their wedding they, they, they got married 46, yes, 46 years, years ago. 
Some of us weren't around that time. Some of us were not around at that time. Yes. All right. All right. But 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 you see, as the host and family life leaders, yes, we we're have, gonna ask we our senior Ella to join me on the platform. Where is Sister Harriet? I know she uh, Ella. Let me allow you to go stand up beside her this time. Go stand up beside your wife, Ella. Go, Ella. Yeah, yeah. Go stand up beside her. She can you can go meet her this time. Yeah, yes, yes, you can stand there. That's fine. Yes. And of course, he is following the directives of the... Yes, yes, yes. Seniority dictates here. Yes, yes, so he wishes yes. to stand there. Not a problem. Look right, at them. Right. Oh. oh. All right, all right, all right. Yes. Congrats. And these are... And, 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 and this couple is the epitome of oh, yes. love. Yes, and we yes. see that. Oh, how many marriages are just mm. started today and there are no more tomorrow. But these... Have, uh, they have planted their relationship yes. on the firm foundation, and we see the evidence of that. To God be the glory. Great, Great things, things He has done. All Happy right. anniversary, Elder and uh, Sister Harriet. All right, all right. So on the 25th of December, again, we have Andrew and Rosemary Davis. They are, ce they are celebrating nine all of nine years. years. Yes. Is, is Sister Rosie here? Yes, I saw her outside. So outside. Uh, we're coming back to our um, Mr. Producer. Can you find Sister Rosie for me, please, sir? Sister Rosemary Davis. Yes. All right. On the 26th, Paul and Kareen Ferdanke yes, will yes. be celebrating all of 29, 29 years, years. Yes. of togetherness. Amen. To and God be the glory. They are together and they are giving God thanks Amen. And for then, their union. Then on December 28th, we have Pastor Maurice... And Sister Kenisha, Kenisha McGee. McGee. They'll be celebrating how much? Eight years. Time flying. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, yes. Seems like just the other day. Yeah? Just yesterday. And then on the 30th, Charles and, and Joy, Joy Duffus. Duffus. How many they years? will be celebrating 38 years. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. And then on December 30th. Closing off the year. Yes. I just sent him out still in a boat. Yes. Yeah. Alex Ferdanke. So come he's come now sir. following in his parents' example, yes, 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 in their footsteps. But he has just begun. Mr. Producer, find your wife for me. <laughs> but they have just begun and they are celebrating four years. They will oh, yes. be celebrating four years, four years come the 30th of December. Amen. And yes, and I, I hear the, the, the church yes, applauding yes. Christa, him. stand up for me, stand up. So usually we do this next week, you see, but you see, they are, they are during youth month and the last quarter of the year, they are the family life leaders, the youth family life leaders. So that's why we have to make it extra special for them. Yes, indeed, indeed. So I, I don't know if we'll be hosting next week, but whatever they choose to do next week, then you're going to have to follow. All right, so happy anniversary when it comes and God's richest blessing. Sister Rosemary is around. I give her the message. She needs to ensure that her husband is here next week. As well, all right. So we're going to share in our family, but I'm going to ask you as best as possible to read with us. It says, "As I see what God has wrought, I, I am filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ, Christ as leader. We, we have nothing, nothing to fear for, for the, the future, future, except as we shall, shall forget the way the, way the Lord has, has led us. us in the past." And that's from Testimonies to Ministers Minister. and Gospel Workers, page thirty-one, LNG White. Brothers and sisters, friends. We are here because of God's goodness. As a Amen. family, let's live, let's love, let's share with each other as we prepare to share in eternity when God comes. We're going to turn you over to our praise Pre team who will prepare our hearts as we move further into the service. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. How are you feeling to have almost made it to the end of the year? I mean, we went through so many struggles this year. I can basically say this was pro well, probably one of my hardest years. Um, maybe for some other people as well. But it's good to know that God keeps on loving us no matter what. And we make mistakes and he still loves us. Sometimes we feel like he doesn't love us. Um, so we're just going to sing Welcome Holy Spirit now. To begin. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, fill us with your power, live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. with their power. 
Church is not called to worship. Shall we all stand? The second coming of Christ is the blessed hope of the church. The grand climax of the gospel. The Savior's coming will be literal, personal, visible, and worldwide. When he returns, the righteous dead will be resurrected and together with the righteous living will be glorified and taken to heaven. But the unrighteous will die. The almost complete fulfillment of most lines of prophecy together with the present condition of the world indicates that Christ's coming is eminent. The time of that event has not been revealed and we are therefore exhorted to be ready at all times. Father, it is with grateful hearts that we come before you this morning. Lord, we just come to celebrate. Celebrate your goodness this morning. I pray, Lord, that you will just send your Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us and help that we'll all be taken to heavenly places. In Jesus' name, amen. So, oh, so when we were selecting these songs, we basically thought about what we, what we wanted to give God thanks for. And what we came up with is we want to give thanks to Jesus for being Jesus. You know, just for being who he, he is, the kind of person he is, providing us, protecting us. So today we're just going to be praising his name over and over because of who he is. And our first song is going to be because of who you are. I will worship you and lift up your name because we're giving Jesus thanks for being Jesus, being that father, that healer, that helper, the, the different things that he is to all of us.
together because of who? Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who? Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because
five months I wasn't seeing well or seeing I should say um, every so I, I made a playlist prior to not seeing so every night I used to listen to this playlist um, there are a couple songs on it but the song that stuck out to me the most was a song called forever by Jason Nelson it's, it says forever is a long time and that's how much I love you so, so this is a message from God God is saying to you I love you forever, no matter what you do, no matter how far you go from me, I still love you. And then there's a flip side to it, because there's a side that says, you go so far from God and you think he doesn't love you anymore because you've done so many wrongs. You ever feel like you do something really bad and you say, Jesus still love me? <laughs> um, because none of us are perfect at the end of the day, right? Um, Jesus is the only perfect one. And sometimes you say, you know you're doing the wrong thing. And you say, I, I wonder if Jesus still loves me. I wonder if he can forgive me for this. Or sometimes we keep on committing the same sin over and over to some point. And even ask for forgiveness because you say, Jesus, I'm going to take me and take him serious. Or, but there was this, there's this other part to the whole song where you say, sometimes you feel like he doesn't love you because you're going through some struggles. Have you ever gone through a struggle, church? Or, or was this year perfect for you? Every morning you wake up perfect. You have money in your pocket, food for you eat. Children have school for you, no struggles. Was that the case for you this year? 
So you've had struggles, so you know what it feels like to have a struggle. So sometimes you, f you feel like, and I know the older you get in your Christian journey, you may understand, but there, there comes a point where sometimes you feel like, I am going through so many struggles, I'm feeling pain every day. And this was me, I'm like, sometimes I was like, what did I do? Why Jesus doesn't love me? Why am I not being able to see? Um, and I'd call my friend sometime or at night, mommy would tell you that every night, most times I, I am crying because I know you, you believe that God can bring you through because you know you go to church every day. You're supposed to believe Him can bring you through. He's brought you through all, all this other stuff. He, he makes you live somewhere. He gives you food, shelter, etc. But you're saying sometimes you feel like you've done something wrong. That's why you're going through a struggle and you're wondering, what have you done? To the point where I was making so many promises with God. And every day I have to hold myself accountable now. Like, God, if you heal me, then I'll do this and I'll do that. And every night I make a new promise. And I'm listening to this song every night. Forever is a long time. And I said, I want to teach you guys a new song today. It's about three lines. It says, forever is a long time. And that's how long I love you. That's how long I love you forever. So we're going to sing that song today. I'll be committed to you. I'll never leave you. Nothing in this world can make me walk away. No matter what life may bring, I'll be by your side. No matter what you face, you won't be.
we're going to sing is a song that we did not practice and Kifa and Sabrina are looking at me because I did this to them before. Um, the name of the song is Faithful, Faithful, Faithful is Our God. And it's the same song. Since we're talking about Jesus and who he is to us, it would only be fair to say that he has been faithful to us for this year. We're almost at the end of the year and he has not failed us yet. We have prayed and he has answered. And I can publicly know say I don't think I've said it publicly I've said it individually I know that you guys are praying for me for those months I heard it I got calls I, I felt it I could feel that I was being prayed for and I want to thank you guys publicly because I think that this is probably the greatest miracle in my life and even though as I said I believe that God would do it because we know that God can answer our prayers and he's still doing miracles today he's not necessarily turning water into wine but he is he's healing us and I want to say that God has been faithful to us
Clinton Whitaker, who will be interceding on our behalf. At this moment, we'll be praying in a special way for our church family. We have been experiencing a rough time, and we have been getting calls, and we have been having to make visits, and, you know, praying for persons. Persons are really going through a hard time. You heard Shamar's yes. story, well. so many other persons are experiencing similar situations. But we believe, brothers and sisters, that we serve a big God. Amen? Amen. We Amen. believe in a God who hears and answers prayer. And this morning, that's why we can call on him. We're going to ask those family members to join us at the altar. If Who's you are in need of special surname, prayer. And surname beginning with M. From M, from to, M, M to S. S. So if M. your surname begins with M all the way to the letter S, then we invite you to come forward as we petition the throne on your behalf. And even when you're in your seat, in your space, and you are so impressed to come to the altar for a closer walk with God, it's yours to take. So those family with the surnames M, N, O, P, Q, R, and S. And I ask you to join us at the altar as we intercede on your behalf and by extension the entire church family as we come to live in these times. The praise team will lead us into the song I Must Tell Jesus. All of my trials. I must tell Jesus can do so let us not limit God 
whatever your situation is this morning, reach out in faith. God will answer. He says, call, and I will answer. Knock shall be opened. Seek, we shall find. So this morning, brethren, whatever the situation is, I know it has been a rough year for some people. But guess what? You are still here. Or oh, we are still here. And that's, that within itself is a testimony of what God can do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves, Lord, in your presence. We don't even feel worthy because we are not. But because of your goodness and your mercies, we are standing in your presence. Here, Lord, in this building are your people. Some are viewing online. There are multiple challenges, Lord. You know them all. There are some families that are struggling with sickness. There are some families that are struggling with wayward children, wayward spouses. There are some families that are struggling financially. But Lord, this morning, we know that amidst all this situation, you are a God who are more than able. And so we come before you this morning. And so Lord, on behalf of your children, whatever the situation is right now, Help us, Lord, to reach out in faith, knowing that we serve a God who cannot fail. And so, Lord, I present every case before you at this moment, whatever it may be. Help us, Lord, to believe that you are a God for this time. And whatever you have done in the past, you can still do it today. The power that is available in the past, that same power is available today. And so, Lord, we are claiming victory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are almost at the end of another year. You have been good to us, Lord. Despite our challenges, Despite our struggles, this morning we can reach out and say, thank you, Jesus. And so, Lord, hear our cries as they come up to you. Help us to go away from here rejoicing, knowing that we serve a mighty God, a God who hears and answers prayers. So, Lord, each case is before you. We can only ask, but the answer lies in you. And so, Lord, we ask that you will answer according to your will, according to your riches in glory, and according, Lord, to the love that you have for your children. Deal with each case, Lord, as you see fit. And help, Lord, that every worshiper here in the building and those who are online will come to the point where they understand and know that the God that we serve is a God that knows no bound and no limit. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you for answering. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that belongs to you because there's no one else who deserves our praise and our glory but you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we say thanks. To God be the glory, both now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I must tell Jesus
Amen. Now, brethren, this is the part of our service where we all can participate in the returning of our tithes and offering to the Lord. I'm going to ask the deacons to stand in place at this time. Matthew 2 verse 2 says, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. We worship God with our resources because the royal baby Jesus was born on planet Earth. The fascination for royal babies has transcended all ages. A search of the name Archie, a royal baby born to the Mountbatten Windsor family in 2019 will give millions of results. The birth of a royal baby often creates a buzz in the media and people feed on the most minute details out of curiosity and, and admiration. Likewise, seeing his star, the three wise men left everything and everyone behind and embark on a tiresome, time-consuming and unsafe journey beyond the boundaries of their homeland. When they arrive in Jerusalem, they disclose the purpose of their trip. We have come to worship the king born of the Jews. The description that we have of this act of worship deserves attention. This week, as we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, called promise, let us remember how the three wise men worship the royal baby by giving of their resources. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are truly grateful to you that we can return to you what is truly yours. We thank you for your many blessings. And we pray, O oh God, that as we give in our tithes and offerings, we'll give our lives wholeheartedly to you. Is my prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. And for those of our viewers online, you can look on the screen and you the screen and you'll see the banking information so you too can participate in this act of worship. My strength surely failing as trials come but left and right in the center I'm now standing not a trace of hope inside and if tears were only raindrops would be flooding now so Lord I ask you today please don't pass me by so hold my hands today let Today, last I 
Lord Jesus, hear my call. Though the kills of life is all I now see, please walk me through this. It's all I ask of thee. So hold. to me and what he did to the two captains of the hosts of Israel unto Abner the son of Ner and unto Amasa the son of Jether whom he slew the, and shed the blood of war in peace and put the blood of war upon his cradle that was about his loins and in his shoes that were on his feet six and last do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his hoary head go down to the grave in peace. This is the end of God's holy word. bowed eyes closed as we look to heaven gracious God and our father in heaven righteous art thou holy and exalted we lift your name on high today God we bless your name you are faithful, you have been faithful, and we just praise you today. You have kept us safe, Lord, through all the year, the months, the weeks. Today we are in your house on this second to last Sabbath, just praising you. You have brought us from near and far, from overseas, and local you brought some lord online we just praise you you've been kind to us you've kept us despite our sickness despite our trials our troubles you've kept us even when lord the earth seemed to move around us crime and violence you've kept us accidents you've kept us Sickness, you've kept us today, Lord. We just praise you for your goodness to us. 
We've come, Lord, today to worship. On this, your holy Sabbath day, we know, Lord, there is worship in heaven. Holy beings bow before you with veiled faces crying, Holy, holy, holy. We are sinful, yet, Lord, we come in your house that you have designated to worship you. We just praise you and ask, oh God, that despite our frailties, our weaknesses, you will accept our worship as coming from grateful hearts. You've done so much for us, Lord. We cannot but praise you. Oh God, today, your manservant stand in your presence in a few minutes to deliver a word from you. We pray, O oh God, that even now, divine Holy Ghost power descend upon him. Envelop his mind and body. Speak through him, Lord, a message that will captivate our attention today and bring us to the point, Lord, where we'll be convicted to go all the way with you. We pray, O oh God, that you will remove every distraction from this auditorium today. Those who are online, Keep them focused and help, Lord, that as we sit at your feet to listen to your word, we'll come to a new realization that you are about to come. And, Lord, that we have little or no time in which to get ready to meet you. Take this waiting congregation in charge. You know the need of every worshiper bowing here. You know those, Lord, who need to be strengthened. You know those, who, Lord, who need to give themselves to you. Those who are still yet undecided. Cause your Holy Spirit to walk up and down this place today. And even as the word is offered, may we be so focused on you, in worshiping you, seeing you, Lord, in our faith, through faith's eye. We see you in your blazing glory in heaven. With all the cherubims and seraphims worshiping you. Help us, Lord, to worship you here with fear and godliness. So, that, Lord, at the, in the end, we, Lord, will receive the blessing. And you, Lord, will receive the glory and the honor. This now is our prayer with thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. or reflected in me. Yes. What a potent topic. Turn so, the searchlight in. So for each day of the year, God would have commissioned us to preach a sermon. Is that right? Yes, yes. By the yes. life we live. Whether we would have preached that sermon or not, for the 52nd Sabbath oh, yes, of the year, oh, yes, oh, yes. right here at Shortwood, and for those of you who are joining us online, you would have heard a sermon, and you'll be hearing one shortly. Amen. We are encouraged indeed, as the search light of truth is turned on, and I will truly in. allow it to turn in and look Amen. inside. 
so that we can live according to God's dictate. Who will be delivering that message? So this afternoon, our first elder, Elder Dave Matnish, will indeed stand in the pulpit to deliver God's message to God's people. In no uncertain way, we pray and we ask you to join us in prayer as we pray that God will speak to him first and then speak through him to our hearts so that by God's grace, as the light is shining in us, we indeed will turn and live for Jesus. Amen. Sister Annette Matnish is here and we just want to ask her to stand quickly for the visitors. We have quite a number of visitors in the house, Sister Matnish, yes. Or it's it's not, keep standing, keep support. standing. Yes, 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 the lender of support. All right. Thank you very much. Now, as we prepare to hear another life saving message from God's mouthpiece, we have this afternoon, I think for the first time, Brother Shamar Watson and Sister Tracy Ann, who will indeed be giving us the song of meditation. Then the next voice you will hear is that of Elder Dave Matnish as he speaks to us. Sit back, open your hearts. As God indeed speak to us through song and then in word. And it's not too late for you to send that link so someone will hear that life-saving message that is about to be given. Amen. When the valley is deep, when the mountain is steep, when the body is weary, when we stumble and fall, when the choices are When we're battered and scarred, when the body is weary, when we've given our all, in Jesus' name we press on.
Amen, church. Amen, church. In Jesus' name, they say that they will press on. What about us? Will we be pressing on in Jesus' name also? I hope that we'll all be pressing on in Jesus' name. I'm smiling, friends. I'm so, you know why I'm smiling? Let me see if any bright person is here to tell me why I'm smiling. I'm smiling because my heart is beating. Yeah, it's beating, but it's not the same pace as it normally beats. Why is that so? I am used to this pulpit. Why? I don't know, but I must tell you it's a good thing that my heart is beating. Whether faster or slower, it's a good thing that it's beating. Let me thank Brother Shane and Nisha for their kind words. Let me thank the singers for their words also. Now this morning, I sh or this afternoon, I should talk to you. What should I say to you this morning? What should I say to you this morning? In consultation with my father, I was directed to speak to you this morning about the heart. The heart. And as I looked at brother and sister Harriet, I said, their hearts must have been beating together for a long time. The two become one. So the hearts are beating as one. I can remember the year, the days, many years ago, brother and sister Harriet, when I saw the both of you at Shorthood football field, walking around the field. You remember those days? Long time ago. And they were walking like two lovers. And they are still like two lovers. I can remember Brother O'Shane, the early days of your life. And not too long ago when I see you walking and your heart beating, pull -a -dum, pull -a -dum, because you're thinking about someone. Yes, the heart is a powerful thing indeed. But also, there are individuals here this morning who your heart has been torn apart because of a family member or because of a friend or because someone who you love do decide to, to, to go away from you. The heart is a powerful thing. This morning, I want us to turn, as I speak to us this morning, the real intent is that we all, including myself, Every time I come to this podium to speak to you, I speak to myself also. So I'm hoping this morning that we'll turn the searchlight inside our hearts this morning and see where we are. And if we need to step up, we step up. Whatever we need to do, we'll do it this morning, this afternoon. Let us, well, before I pray, before I pray, no, I don't know about you, but already I am giving thanks. There has been a couple of years, that, well, up to last year, was it last year? Up to last year, this time I think I was working in another place. And at that place where I worked, I was, I was in charge. And so I had some amount of flexibility, you know? Uh, subsequent to that, I've changed my place of work. And where I'm working now, I've, I'm finding out that I'm not so flexible. I don't have all the time that I used to have to do things because other persons are directing what I do. And so, when I get these few days, I really feel good, Shane. I really feel good. And also, I must tell you, as it comes to this season, I am feeling happy. I'm feeling good because last week's Sabbath, around about this time, my wife and I, Annette, look up so they can see you. My wife and I, we celebrated 22 years of marriage. God has been good. I must also tell you that for the, part, for the first, Annette, for the first 15, 16 years of our marriage, I, I heard about marriage, but I did not know. When you talk about problems and worry and 
talk it. We never know that. Is after that the devil kind of turn up a little screw and I realize, hey, pinch her and it will really, you know, a real marriage. We start to have little nigglings, you know. But thank God, regardless of the nigglings, we are here this morning. And we can look into each other's face and we can smile with each other. Thank the Lord. And for those of you who have yours, and those who don't marry yet, hurry up and run. Come. No, no, don't run it down. Don't run it down. Unless God choose that person for you, don't run it down. Because uh, it has teeth and it bites heart. All right? So don't run it down. So this morning we're going to be talking about the heart. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you this morning for the privilege of coming into your sanctuary this morning. There are many dear fathers who would love to come into the sanctuary but cannot because of various reasons. This morning you have blessed us. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless even those who are online. There are some, Lord, who like to come online now because of electricity, internet issues. Various issues, they cannot come online. But you have blessed them so that they can come online today. Lord, I pray that the blessing you have in store for us, we will receive. I know, Lord, that every time you give a message, there's something in it for each one of us. Help, Lord, that we'll take the part that belongs to us. And make the change in our life that is necessary today. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Turn the searchlight inside your heart today. Now, the, the scripture reading, 1 Kings 2, 5 and 6. It's really, the, the story is about King David and his nephew. King David and his nephew. Now his nephew's name was Joab. Nephew's name was Joab. And that's who we'll be talking about today for a, for, for, for a little while. King David and his nephew. More so his nephew than King David. Now, in life, I am going to be pitching this story, uh, that Old Testament story, against a New Testament story of Judas. Judas and Jesus in the New Testament and David and Job in the Old Testament. I'll be paralleling, paralleling those two this morning as, or to today as we speak. E, I would like to tell you this morning that... Uh, Jew, uh, Jew, Joab was a man of David's heart. He loved David. And you'll hear the things he did uh, to show his love to David or to be acquainted with David. I'll be looking at that this morning and you will see how much we can parallel ourselves to the, the story. David was a man of much strength. He was a man who was chosen by God to be king. Chosen by God to be king. And from a little, from he was chosen, I suppose his nephew knew that he was chosen to be king. And so he grew beside him and he was very much acquainted with him. He had daring strength. He had courage and he was cunning. A formidable warrior. Right after, that, that's Joab, and right after David was crowned king, he conquered a mighty stronghold. Can you imagine? After, after becoming king, you conquer a stronghold that Israel wanted to conquer for many years and could not conquer. That's what David did. And as David conquered that stronghold, guess what? He chose. He chose to be his right hand. The man to be his, at his right hand, is the, the captain of his army, he chose his nephew, Joab. Now, Hanward, he, he was supposed to be loyal to David. And he was indeed loyal to David. He spent his life serving David. All his life as a, as a captain, he served his master, David. But guess what? 
as I studied the story, I learned that he never truly loved David. David was his uncle. David was the one who gave him a job. David was the one who ensured that he ate. He gave him somewhere good to live. He gave him all he had. But he did not truly love David. Didn't love him at all. Who am I talking about? Job, of course. And at, le at last, he ended up under the judgment and wrath of David. Now, follow me carefully. David gave him everything. But at the same time, you'll find out at the end that he ended up under the judgment and wrath of David. How was that possible? You may ask, how oh, was that possible? How was that possible? The only thing sadder, sadder than that, would be for a modern day Christian, you and I, to work hard for the Lord. Hard for the Lord. And end up in hellfire when Jesus comes. That is, that, that is the only thing that is sadder than that. The only thing. David is an Old Testament type, a prophetic picture of the Lord himself. Jesus was king. David was king. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus had uh, Judas following him. David had Joab following him. Jesus had Judas betraying him. Uh, and on David had Joab betraying him. Similar. Things similar. Really similar. Both David and Judas are of the tribe of Judah. Both of them came from the tribe of Judah. Both of them. And there are other things about both of them that are similar. Similar things about them. Both of them also. Both of them were God's anointed king. God anointed David. God anointed Jesus. Both of them. Both were first rejected. Jesus was rejected by the people. David was rejected at first when he was chosen king. Saul wanted to kill him. Both were rejected at first. And then they were placed on the throne. Happens to both of them. See what they had in common? Several of the Psalms David wrote. Several of them. And, I'm, and I want you to, in your, in your own time, look at Psalm 22. Applied to Jesus. Several of the Psalms applied directly to Jesus. Psalm 22 is a perfect example of this. It, it, it spoke, it referred to Jesus directly. Now, we can be loyal. And, yes, we are, and yet we are lost. We can be loyal and yet we are lost. Joab was loyal and we'll see that he was lost. If, we're, if, you, if you were to ask anyone back then, who is David first right on? They would tell you Joab. They would tell you Joab. He, he was his first right on. But he never really opened his heart to David. Never really did that. Job had family loyalty. Yes, they came from the same family. Same family. So he had that family loyalty to David. He, he also had, had fundamental loyalty. Yes, fundamentally, he was attached to his uncle David. Joab knew David was the nation God's anointed savior. The nation anointed him as the savior. He knew that. As he served him. And he believed that he would do a good job. He knew David was sovereign. And sovereign mean David was, the kingship was God anointed. Above everything else. Above everyone else. He knew that. Indeed he knew that. He also knew that David was sufficient. He was sufficient for the job. He was good enough for the job. And he could have accomplished the job. He knew that. He knew all of that. He had been around David enough to know how remarkable David was. Who he had single-handedly taken out a lion. 
single-handedly taking out a giant. Single-handedly taking out a beer. So he knew that David. Doesn't matter how long you have been coming to church. Doesn't matter the position you hold in church. The big question is, do you know the man? Because it makes no sense. One here, two here, five years, 40 years. If you don't know the man, you'll end up like Judas ended up. And that's sad. That's sad. Dion said it this morning to be sad. We need to know the man and not just about the man. We need to be loyal to the man. We need to be loyal to him and know his heart. Know his heart. We need to know him this morning. We can be in church. We can be religious. We know Helen G. White writing back and front. We know the Bible back and front. Yes, we are prayer warriors. Yes, we speak the word. We are religious. But we can be lost. We can be lost. Religious. Religious but lost. Then why would David at the end of his life tell his son Solomon to make sure to bring judgment upon Joab? Why? David is a wicked man. Joab served him all his life. From he became king, Joab served him as the chief army man, the general in the army. And at, and at David's dying bed, he told Solomon, his son, to make sure that, that Joab be killed. Can you imagine that? David was cold, wasn't it? You would say that David was cold. We would say that David was cold. In all biblical record, you can never find a place where Job 
truly from his heart loved David. All that he did was, was out of, he didn't truly love David. How much do we truly love God today? We're in church. We're looking, we're looking good. I have told a couple of persons this morning that they look good. But are you here to look good? Or are you here to praise and serve and worship the God that you love? This morning, we are turning our searchlights inside. We are searching our heart. Because when the tire meets the road, the only thing that matters is your love for God. Not your love for church. Not your love for position. Not your love for Brother McNeish. Not your love for elder or pastor. But your love for God. And if you don't love God and have a heart like God, then we're not going to make it, friends. We're not going to make it. We need to have, we need to get that heart like God. If we want to make it to the kingdom, we must have the heart like God. I must say that, but the story told me that Joab dis disdained David's mind. Repeatedly, Joab went around the king's back and murdered those David had forgiven. It was not once. It was not twice. He went beyond David's back and killed those that David forgave. Friends, how many times we walk out of church Walk out of the building because who was up here we didn't want. How many times we stay home because we look at the roster we saw, we saw that X was preaching. How many times we do that? Is it me? Is it the person up here singing you're here for or is it because of God? Friends, Joab was destroyed because he followed a man that he did not really love. Many of us will be destroyed because we are following a man who we don't really love. We don't love Jesus. This is just a show. We don't love Jesus. And if we don't change our ways, sad to say we're going to end up like Job. Sad to say we're going to end up like Judas. Sad to say. The bottom line this afternoon, church, we must know the man and we must love the man. Not to hear about him, not to speak about him, but we must love the man. The test this morning, the test this morning for us as Christians is whether, whether or not we are loyal to God, to God's love. It's, do we love as Jesus loved? Do we forgive as Jesus forgave? When the church the church, yes, I said the church. When the church took Mary to be stoned because she committed adultery. When many of those there committed adultery also. Um, I can imagine the person who committed adultery with her. He was also there and he had a stone in his hand to stone her to death. The church. But Jesus with his heart of love. Jesus with his compassionate heart went in the sun and he wrote. And every single one had to turn because their life were not right. Do we know the man? Are we following the man because of we, we love him for what he did for us? Are we following because seventy eight is the right church? We are following because our parents brought us to church. Our friend told us about the church. Or because we don't want to burn in hell fire. If you don't love the man, you're going to burn in hell fire anyway. If we don't know the man, we must know the man and love the man. Love as Jesus himself loved. We must love as Jesus himself loved. It was David's sovereign will that Solomon became king after him. Now, I must tell the church that God's words are for yesterday, for today, and for tomorrow. God's words never change. And, and, and it was destined by David that his son Solomon should become king after him. But another son decided that 
Because he was older, he was going to be king. So he, he gathered some people together to, and started celebrating. As a matter of fact, Joab, David's right hand, David's, David's captain of his army. And I must tell you that back there in those days, the most powerful person was your army captain. So he was the most powerful man in David's kingdom to David. And he went and he joined with David's son. And also the high priest, another powerful man, both of them went along with, 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 with David's older son to crown him as king. Friends, that could only happen because they did not know the man. They did, did not know David's heart. And that will happen to us because we do not know Jesus' heart. Friends, with all that is happening in the world now, and I said in the world now, because whether you are in the United States of America, whether you are in Canada, or England, or Japan, or Europe, wherever you are, if you are in Jamaica, whether you are in Kingston, or Portland, or St. Thomas, or St. Mary, wherever you are, it is obvious the signs are on the wall that this world is coming to its end soon, very soon. Very, there are some countries right now that you no longer use money. There are, no, there are some countries right now you don't use a passport. There are some countries that may, you, you, you just travel. They have all the information on you. You talk about not being able to buy and sell. Things are in motion. That you cannot, you can, you can, you dare not buy and they are so right now you, you, you the, 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 the JPS and all those companies are trying to get us from stopping us from going into the offices everything is they are aiming for things to be done online they control everything everything's are happening to show this world is coming to its end soon soon also soon also we will have to declare our loyalty to man or to God that's where it's getting. That's what it's really getting at in a friend. Us declaring our loyalty, whether we are loyal to God or to man. Now, if we don't know that man, like Joab, if we don't know that man, where will our loyalty lie? Will we stand up for a God we do not know? Or will we stand up for, for ourselves, for our selfish self, wanting to live longer, wanting to eat food? Wanting not to feel pain. Forgetting that when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, God delivered him. Forgetting that when Shadrach, Mishka, and Abednego were thrown in the fire, God kept them cool. We forgot those. And, but if we don't know the man, we cannot stand for the man. And that's what I'm saying this morning. We need to take time to know the man. Not about the man, but know the man. Joab did not know David. So even in the end, he went against David to, to, to crown uh, the king who was not supposed to be king. Friend, we are living in a time where we are, we are privileged to live in this in these days. We are privileged to live in the days when Jesus come. We, we who are here might very well be some of those to be caught up alive to meet him in the air. Privilege. But that will not happen, friend, if you do not know him. When the trump sound, it is said that those who do not know him when he comes, his brightness will strike them dead. But when you know the man, when you love the man, when you have a, the heart like the man, when he comes, my friend will rise to meet him in the air. I would like to be a part of that number. I would like not just to read the Bible, not just to come to church, but I would like God to give me a heart that I that like him, that I can love like him, that I can forgive like him, that I can give like him, and that I can live like him. That's it, friends. That's it. This morning, as you listen, the, the intent is, the intention is that you need to turn you need to turn the limelight into your life. Turn it on the inside to see where you are with God. 
Because at the end of the, at the, end of the, the day, friends, it's not how long you have been coming to church. Not how much you know your Bible. Those are, those are necessary to help to build a relationship with him. The important thing is to know him and to be like him. I was at a function recently. And when they asked what, what persons were eating, and someone said, Dave, uh, Dave eat chicken, man. Another person said, Dave, don't eat chicken. So someone heard and someone came over to me and said, are you a vegetarian? I said, not really. No, I eat fish. I'm not a vegetarian. But I said, I went on to tell them that, look, you know why I don't eat chicken and beef and those things? It's not because they're going to save me. Those things are not going to stop because me to go to hell or heaven. You can eat your beef and go to heaven. But I believe strongly that my character, my body, need to, my mind needs to be prepared for heaven. And from what I understand from the scripture, I will not be killing any cow in heaven. I will not be killing any goat in heaven. No chicken will be killed in heaven. So if I'm preparing for heaven, why should I be, be partaking and indulging in this now and I'm preparing for a better place? That's my reason. And so if you only eat it, fine, but that's my reason for doing it. Because when I go to that place, I will not be eating those things. I am preparing myself from now to go to heaven. I would like to have a mind like Christ. A forgiving mind and a forgiving heart. And if I want to make it to heaven, I must achieve this before Jesus comes. If I don't achieve it, then I will not. I cannot and I will not make it to heaven. Some of us this morning are going to be are just like Job. We are going to receive the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ because outwardly, outwardly we are loyal. Outwardly the community see us walk into church. Outwardly our neighbors see us dress and drive out each morning or walk out to come to church. Outwardly, but inwardly we are far from God. And if that is the case, we can't make it to heaven. It can't be a outward thing, but it must be a outward thing and a inward thing. So as we, as, we, as we come to the end of this year, friends, the message is, if you're not inwardly clean, if you're not inwardly pure, let us strive to be inwardly clean and inwardly pure before the, end, the, the year finish, so that we can start the new year in the right place with God. That's where we are to be. It's not so much about your job you do and the family you have. And those, things are, those things are good but not good enough to make it to heaven. It's the inward cleansiness. The inward cleanliness that is important. The heart like God. That is what is important. You are not saved by the doctrines you can, you can, you, you can talk about. You are not saved. As I said, by the boy, you know the Bible. As a matter of fact, a lot of jobs have wrecked a lot of churches today. There are many persons like Job who criticize people out of church. Who give people false doctrine so they leave the church. Like Job. Like Job. Like Job. Many of them have done that. To many churches and many places, they don't, many of them, many of us here in church, don't forgive as Jesus forgives. That's what David did. David forgave his enemies and Job killed them. Many of us this morning, God, Jesus has forgiven. All of us have sinned and come short of his glory. And Jesus in knowing this has forgiven us, but we have stabbed many people here in church. Can't go to heaven. We are just like Job. We are just like Judas in the, in, the, in the New Testament. We can't make it if we are like that. Can't make it if we are like that. They, 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 they never seek. We don't seek out the rebels. How many of us as we walk along the road, we stop to say something good to one of the guys on the road who's digging out the hand migle? How many of us do that? They are not important. What's important is that we want to get to church to pray. Which God? Which God? I'm saying, friends, we need to wake up and smell it before it's too late. Wake up. Smell it before it's too late. 
Do you have the heart of Jesus Christ this morning? Do you have the heart this morning? I, I, I do not know. It's a good thing. I don't know your heart. You don't know mine. Do you have the heart of Jesus this morning or this afternoon? That's a big question. Do you love like Jesus loved today? Do you love the way Jesus loved? Do you have the mind of Christ today? Do you have that mind? Are you submitted to the will of Christ today? Are you? Are you? You may be outwardly loyal, but they say, but inwardly you are lost. Lost inwardly. And it's not a part of the body that's going to heaven. It's a total body. So if the, if the, if the outside lost, then the inside will be lost too. If the inside is in, then the outside will be in too. It's not a halfway thing, but it's a full thing. We, men of us, will be religiously lost. Coming to church, having just a form of godliness, but denying the power of Jesus Christ. Men of us will be lost. Lost, don't have the power that is required for us to make it. They are the, they are the least likely to realize that. And, and with, let me tell you something. When we're full of ourselves, I believe that we are there. We are the least to accept that we are wrong, that we don't, re we, we don't start the journey with Jesus yet. The least, the first, full of ourself and self righteous and holy righteous and you name it. You name it. And we are the least, we are, we, we are, we are the hardest to accept that our life is wretched. Our life is pure, poor, poor. Poor, the least, the least. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. Hmm? Jesus gave his solemn warning. Jesus has warned us. Jesus has warned us. He said in his word, he said in Matthew 7, verse 22, friends, he said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not Prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out demons, and in thy name done many wonderful work. And here's what the answer will be, friend. God will say, depart from me. Because your heart was not the heart of God. You were not being you 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 were not doing those things according to God, but because of the, according to the devil. Be careful who you're worshipping. Be careful who you're following. Make sure it is God and not Satan. Be careful who, you, who you're following. It says, what a tragedy. A, 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 a tragedy. Joab fought alongside David. As I said, he fought alongside David. Beside each other. He and David side to side. Then he received David's wrath. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? That must have been hard for David. It must have been hard for Jesus to be working on you, working on me at the sunset. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It must have been hard for Jesus to be working on you for so long. And you hold on to that one sin. That one sin. You know what that sin is. You know what that sin is that is separating you from God. You know. And you have been holding on to that one sin. And Jesus is working on you. He has been speaking to you. Speaking to me. And you have been holding on to that one sin. And because of that one sin, in the end, he will have to say, depart from me. I know you not. Friends, it's rough. Raw friends, whatever it is you know this morning, turn the searchlight into your heart. See where you are. You know yourself. I don't know you. And see what is there that needs to be eradicated, need to be taken out. You need to do a surgery on your heart today. And if you can't do it, if it's too hard, Jesus is willing to help you. He's willing to help you. But with that heart, you can't make it. You won't make it. Many are going to die and go to hell surrounded by baptismal certificates. 
You have the certificate. Your name is on the record. You name it. You have, you have plaques are in your house that you, have what you have, that you have gotten from church. Your name come over NCU. You name it. All over. But you are lost with all of that. Because you have no lot and part with God. Your heart is far from God. It's all outward and not inward. Turn the searchlight in today, friends. I beg you. Turn the searchlight in. Are you sure you are saved today? Are you sure you are saved today? Does God's spirit be a witness in your life today? That's the question. Does God's spirit be a witness in your life today? Does your spirit, God's spirit, be a witness with your spirit? Can you walk, I'm a man with God today. Can you walk side and side with God today? Because remember, God cannot dwell in no dirty vessel. No dirty vessel. You know yourself, friends. I know myself. I'm speaking to you as I'm speaking to me today. This word is not from me, it's from God to us, all of us, including me. Are you sure? You are saved. Are you really, really sure? Second Peter 1 verse 10 says, We are for brethren. Give diligence to make your calling and your election what? You need to give diligence. I can't give diligence for you. To make sure that your calling and your election is sure. Nobody can do it for you. Only you can do it for yourself, friend. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith. That's what 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 said. Each person must examine themselves. Sister, I cannot examine you. Shane, I cannot examine you. You must examine yourself. Songwriter said, just a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Yes, he will hear your cry. And he will answer by and by. As you're sitting there today, you know where you are with God. Talk to God this morning. The year is coming to an end. Many people have passed. Last week. Last week, Sabbath. Last week, Sabbath. A group of young people. They went to sing in St. Mary. And on their way back, one died. One still in coma. One has recovered. One of those persons, or maybe even two of them, are persons who came right here at Shorted and sang. We don't know what will happen to us, friends. So have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. You don't know if you live to see the end of this year. Talk to him now. Tomorrow never come. Talk to him. Make him fix up your heart because you cannot do it by yourself. You cannot do it by yourself. When I'm trying to discern if someone is right as a Christian, you know, you, you, you know it's that when you, when you want to see, I had a, 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 my, my aunt, my uncle's wife, she was such a godly person inside out. Such a godly person. She was kind. She was loving. I'm not going to judge whether she should go to heaven. But you could see God's love shining through her. Do people see God's love shining through you? Do God, do people see, can people see God's love shining through you? I am saying to today, friend, turn the searchlight into your heart today. Turn the searchlight into your heart today. The year is coming to an end. Don't let this year end that you are where you started the year. It's 11 months, almost 12 months. Message this morning, friends. Turn the searchlight into your hearts today. Turn it into your hearts today.
Okay, I know. I know that I am not where I should be with God. So I'm going to take the first step this afternoon to say, Lord, help me. Clean me up. Clean up my heart so I can be where I ought to be with you. You might be there this afternoon and you want to say, Lord, I want to be where you want me to be. And you want to come so we can pray together. Leave your seat and come now to the altar so we can. You're already a member, not a visitor. You're a member of the church. And you know within your heart that you're not where you are to be with God. You know that. I do not know. And you want us to pray together this morning. Leave your seat and come so we can pray together. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you once used to walk with God. Yes. And you want to be, you don't want this here to end and you are at the same place you are. And you want to say, pray for me that I might come home. Leave past everybody and come. Come to the altar. Come closer. Come closer. You are, you are maybe you have not been a member. You are not, you have never been baptized. But you like prayer this morning because you're, you like a change of heart. And you want to say, pray for me, Mr. Speaker. Come. Just come. Pass everybody and come. Let the devil know that, hey, I'm going to the front. I want my portion of the blessing this morning. Come up to. Come before everybody. Maybe you are there. I don't know. Maybe you are there. And you want that special prayer this morning. Just come. Put the devil to shame this morning. Leave the crowd and come. Leave your seat and come. So we can pray. I'm not calling you to be baptized this morning. I'm just calling you to pray for you. That the Lord will help you to have a clean heart, a changed heart, as you leave this year and move into the new year. Is there one person? Is there one person like that? Michael, I say, don't stop. Come. Don't, don't, don't stop. Come. Come, let us pray, man. Don't stop. Put the devil to shame. Come, man. Put him to shame. You want to come with him, sister? Come with him, son. He's afraid. Come. Don't make the devil get the victory today. This might be your very last day in church, your very last message. Leave your seat and come. If you're not, if you're not yet baptized, you have not yet given your heart to God. Come, the Holy Spirit led you here today for this message because He wants to save you. Is there one more for God? Just one more for God. Not baptized. Was baptized. No longer in church. And you want the prayer? Just come. One more. One more for. Thank you very much, praise team. Thank you very much. Now, in the stillness of the hour, maybe you have one struggling person. You're struggling. You're not baptized. You don't want to come before everybody. But you want to just stand where you are so we can pray together. We can petition God's throne for you. God bless you. Yes, today. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father, I just want to thank you for being the merciful God you are. You know, and I know that none of us standing before you deserve to be here this afternoon. But Lord, because of your mercy and because of your grace, we are here this morning. We are wretched, we are poor, we are blind. Our mind is so 
far from you at times. But Lord, regardless of our filthiness, you have still extended your clean, glorified hands to us. And we thank you this morning, dear, this afternoon, dear Father. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with each and every one here before you. They come, Lord, because deep down they realize that they are, we are not at the place where we ought to be with you. We are not at the place where our hearts are like yours. Our mind is like yours. Dear Father, our actions are those like yours. But Lord, we know that we ought to be in that place if we have to make it to the kingdom. So this morning, Lord, I pray on our behalf that, Lord, if it means steel wool, you clean up that heart. If it means the high-end brush, the wire brush, you clean the heart. If, if it means just a little bleach, you will clean the heart. If it needs just a little sponge, you will clean the heart. Whatever it needs, dear Father, clean each and every heart that is here this morning. They come to you, Lord, because we know that you are capable. You are able. So, Lord, we are at your mercy this morning. Help that none of us will leave this sanctuary, this altar this morning, being the same way we came. But we leave us changed materials, ready to take up our rightful place in heaven. Lord, I pray even for Miguel and the others who stood that are I'm not yet walking with you at this time. I pray, Lord, that you'll help them to realize that soon, sooner than we think, your coming is near. You said that the last day will be rapid ones. And indeed, they are rapid, dear Father. We cannot complete the task we have to do in a day because the days are so short. It's still 24 hours, Lord, but it's so short. Lord, we say all that is happening around the world to show us that your coming is nearer than we think. So I pray, Lord, that you will help him and help the others to give their life to you before it is eternally too late. Help them to come into the ark of safety before it starts raining and they can no longer enter. I pray, Lord, that you build this church short. Too. We have a great task ahead of us as we finish this year and go into the new year in this community. There are many young people and many people here who need to come to know you and serve you before you come. Lord, help us to take the mantle and go out so that souls may come to know you before it is eternally too late. Continue to bless us and keep us and save us when you come, Lord, I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen and amen. church say English. Let the church say Amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church God has spoken. We have heard a message of warning, an on-time message 
God indeed has turned the searchlight into our hearts. And brothers and sisters, friends, we cannot but spend some time with Jesus. Amen, amen. Let's make a decision today that we'll allow Jesus to fix us up before it's too late. Amen, amen. I will serve you until our dying day. And that is our pledge. That's the pledge we're making this afternoon. I will serve you until my dying day. It's an individual pledge that I'm proposing that we make that under God we will serve him till the last breath is taken away from us. All right, we just want to thank you so much for sharing with us in our worship experience. We are live at the Shortwood Seventh-day Adventist Church. We meet back here this afternoon at 3 p.m. for our Bible class. And then we move on at 4 o'clock to our Adventist youth program. So, And even then, we will be meeting here tomorrow. Oh, yes. Tomorrow evening for yes. a Sunday evening worship session. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure sharing with you. I'm Shane McIntosh. I'm Nisha Palmer Murray. We'll turn you over to the praise team as we continue to sing and to lift up Jesus as we exit the sanctuary. Okay. 